Hello, and welcome to Candle Keep Mysteries. Today, we're going to learn all about the joy of extra dimensional spaces. I'm your DM, Kathleen, and joining us are our four players. Corey, tell us about your player. My player is Coriander Dickinson. Oh, right. She's a 30 something human. Uh, now, I'm playing uh, Miriam Lilly, a wood elf bard at level one. All right, player and character. I, I'm. This is off to an auspicious start already. I'm excited. Yeah. Matt, who are you? Who are you? And who are you playing? <laughs> I'm Matt Griffiths, and I'm playing Minty Irons. He has big dad energy. Oh, also, he's a halfling artificer. So, there you go. I am very excited. Ian, what? What's your character up to? It's your boy, Orvin Crankerson, from the Sword Mountain Range, here to mess it up. Not not the mountain range, the, the area. We're here to have some fun. Please, please act with utmost decorum in the Candlekeep Library. <laughs> <laughs> we'll and keep it down. <laughs> Excellent. And uh, speaking of, of asking people to act responsibly, Andy, what's your who's your character? My character is Terry Fizzlewit. He is a level one rock gnome wizard, and he is a junior uh, adjutant. Adjutant? Am I pronouncing that correctly? Adjutant. Adju adjutant with a T? Tant? Adjutant. Tant. Adjutant. Tant. Adjutant. I am a junior adjutant, adjutant at, uh, at Candlekeep. Mm -hmm. So if you're if you in the audience are unfamiliar about Candlekeep, so it is a huge library, and the people who work there are adjutants, and there's all sorts of very high up, very exciting things, cool forbidden knowledge and stuff that happens here. But also, there's some level one characters that also have to go to Candlekeep. So in fact, welcome to Candlekeep, the largest written repository of lore in Faerun. Your journey has been long and arduous, but worthwhile. Just beyond the Emerald Door is the legendary Great Library, the largest collection of textbooks, journals, folklore, sports statistics, recipes, songs, erotica, plays, and spellbooks in all the realms. No better place exists for those who have a love for knowledge or a desperate need for information. Reads the sign in the waiting room that three of you are currently sitting inside. So uh, Miriam, Minty, and Orvin, uh, you find yourself in a small, uh, cold, stone-walled room. Uh, there is you three in here uh, and a reception desk behind which sits a receptionist. Uh, she also sort of fits with the decor. She's quite stone-faced. And you're sitting on like massive heavy duty wooden benches and you can tell a long time ago these were just like rough hewn slabs of lumber that somebody had carted in here but through all of the years of people sitting down these are now smooth and fine and they feel like they've been oiled uh just with like perhaps natural secretions and the filth of other seekers uh and there's like even little like butt-shaped depressions in them so they're not even uncomfortable for these huge wooden benches how many other great asses have been here before yours? Perhaps you wonder. It is very quiet in here. Very quiet, Hel you say. <laughs> Hello, can I come in yet? No, you will be called. Uh, it's been here since... The last time I forgot to stop counting. My number says 58. There's only mm. three other people here waiting. Mm. We are waiting for your adjutant. Ah, adjutant. Very important person. No. I mean, we I can say that we're important very important people, people that's, too. That's why we have an adjutant, right? I yes. thought adjutant was a military term. Mm. I saw an armed guard for the, for the library. Yes. That is something worthy of Orvain Crankerson. That's nice, sir. 
Do you guys want to investigate your room a bit? Sure. Oh, hell yeah. Let's investigate. <laughs> All right. Give me an investigate check. Nine. What do I Nine. There are no windows in this room, but there is a small framed picture of Candlekeep that you can look at. 17. Oh, Minty. Uh, you, uh, first of all, notice that there, that is not a normal picture of Candlekeep. That is, in fact, the tourist brochure that you that you followed to get to Candlekeep. They've just framed it. It's very cheap. Uh, and there, you notice that there is a, a notice board behind the reception desk, and there's three papers pinned to it. Uh, would you like to read any of them? It's one of your sessions, so yes, I would. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you can read one of the notices. It's open mic night at the hearth from 7 to 10 p.m. tonight. Beers are one copper cheaper if you're not a bard, but they're one copper more expensive if you are. <laughs> nice. Uh, I Minty... am offended. <laughs> <laughs> Minty would like to rummage through his bag, mm -hmm. pull out a little piece of paper, mm -hmm. pin it to the board. Oh, the board is behind the reception desk. Do you want to get? Do you want to like actually like reach over to the reception desk and pin it up back there? I am sh not very tall. I'm a halfling, so I'm going to ask the receptionist to pin it up there. Uh, All right. It is a not super big, just kind of business card. Mm -hmm. It says on it, minty irons, minty irons. And in a faint woman's voice, we'll make your engine purr and your ride smooth. And it just repeats that once every 30 seconds on loop. Sir, uh, is, is this an advertisement? Yeah. Th this I'm... is an official notice board only. Is that, is the barred one an official one as well? Yes, it's an official notice of the- And who of, can I complain to night. about it? Oh, the manager of the hearth. All right. You guys want to read anything read anything else on our notice board yet or shall we move on i think i'd like to investigate these ass creases on the bench <laughs> uh, smooth so run my hand over the lacquer uh, i mean they haven't really been lacquered this is more just natural wear and tear and um they're yep. i would say surprisingly well defined hmm. all right uh so while all of this is happening, uh, there is a, at the other end of the long stone hallway that is going to terminate in this small, cold waiting room, there is a, there is a small rock gnome with deep orange skin, blue eyes, and a pointy blonde beard, and he is enduring what, what, his, one of his what, uh, what his boss calls a walk and talk. Uh, his boss, of course, is a tall uh, human. Uh, he's quite muscular for an avowed. He looks swole and his name tag because they're all where everybody's wearing name tags it reads uh randall keith mid adjutant supervisor and the small rock gnomes name tag reads terry fizzlewit junior adjutant and there is a little sticker that they've stuck on the bottom of terry's name tag that helpfully adds the phrase mediocre standing uh so anyhow Randall, Randall and Terry are having a walk and talk down this long hallway and uh, Randall's trying to pep you up. So he's like, hey, Terry, this assignment's going to be a slam dunk for you, right? Oh, absolutely, sir. I, I am all I am all aboard for this, whatever this is going to be. Uh, uh, I am ready. I've got my little my little uh, backpack and I, uh, I'm ready to do what needs to be done. I, I, I swear to do a good job. Absolutely. All you got to do is escort these three people, get them to where they need to go, help them find what they're looking for, and then get them back out the door. Got it? Got it. And you're not going to improve anything. No, I promise I won't. Excellent. All right. Perfect. All right. And so after that, I would say mediocre pep talk slash light threat uh randall and terry are gonna eat reach the end of the hall and he's gonna slap you on the shoulder and say you can do a little bud and then he's gonna jog back off the way he came he's like yeah 
Randall Keith, greatest boss in the world. Woo! Excellent. <laughs> and Terry, maybe uh, un unobserved to Randall Keith, Terry hits the floor after being slapped on the back by this very, very muscular human and just like <laughs> right onto his face <laughs> and gets up and, and dusts himself off. Excellent. Before you use a door. Oh. You must be here to take us to our adjutant. Uh, well, well, sir, I, I am your adjutant. Uh, I, uh, uh, yes, sir, I, I'm here to, to help you find what you need to find and get what you need to, to, to get done there. Uh, and, uh, gosh, there are, uh, there are three of you. Um, yeah, do you know when my adjutant's gonna show up? Uh, well, you know, there's been some uh, budget cuts to uh, to this sort of thing, um, and I'm afraid that I'm uh, I'm I'm all the three of you have for today. Uh, but I am I am pepped up. I have been talked with in the in the way of the pep, and I I am here to to help to help you all three of you. Hello, my name is Terry. Welcome, Terry, adjutant extraordinaire. I'm sure so you will guide us toward the goal. The receptionist Terry is going to pull you aside and say, uh, "Here is the uh, here's the small here's the folder." And it's like she hands you a little purple folder, mm -hmm. and you open it up, and uh, and you can see that it's like their names, it's what the books they brought to get in here, and sort of you know roughly what they're wanting to find. Uh, and uh, she says, "All these three seekers are dealing with some sort of." wasting issue or a curse or admonishment things 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 not being where they should be uh could you please escort them to the chambers of the sage matrius absolutely i, I could i could do that and expediently thank you very much and do i know this receptionist do i know their name uh her name is minoxa uh, Minoxa, uh, good to see you as always. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for this. It's a purple too. It's my favorite color. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, make me a perception check, Andy. Will do. Uh, I, natural 20. Um, <laughs> the plus one, 21. time. <laughs> Excellent. I, I know everything Gosh. about this person. Wow. You know, you know, Minoxa. Uh, you know that she is uh, she uh, she's a priest of Denier. She you know that uh, that uh, everything that they wear is purple. Uh, her robes are purple, and uh, you also I'm going to say uh, you also uh, get to read one of you're you're so hyper aware. Briefly, the one the other joke I wrote flashes into your awareness, and you see that the Temple of Ogma is having a bake sale on the 17th of Greengrass, <gasps> and you think, ooh. Oh, Terry is going to make a note of that, and he takes out a piece of paper from his backpack and writes that down, puts it back. Um, Perfect. <laughs> and he says, "And he says, thank you so much, Minoxa," and and has and has a moment of true understanding with her, and mm. and, and absolute sympathy and uh, and total comprehension of of her life in that one moment, and says, "Thank you." And turns back to the the three of them. Well, I'm here to find you. I'm taking you to a chamber, and gosh. Wow, this is, uh, I haven't been there in a little bit. This will this will be interesting. I wonder if they move the furniture around. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this way. So you're going to march them through the Court of Air outside of, like, sort of the reception area in Candlekeep, and you're going to go to the the Pillars of Pedagogy. Pedu peded, peded? Pedagogy. Oh, I forgot. It's the Gaga. Pedagogy. 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 I've forgotten how to pronounce anything. Um, you, the, the pillars of pedagogy, ped, the pillars, the where Matrius the Sage is hanging out. The teaching uh, boys. He's 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 got he's a, he's one of the 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 visiting scholars, and uh, he is an expert in um, uh, wasting diseases and stuff like that. Uh, so, or like, uh, you know, curses on the land and things that cause things to wither. So, you know, people go to see him all the time and, you know, he provides his assistance and candle keep lets him basically hang out. So that's, you know, a good thing. So you take them up to his chambers. Um, the door is closed. Excellent. Well, this, uh, uh, the, my new friends, this is the place. And I wrap up the door thusly. There is no answer. Maybe yep. a little harder. I just like. There is still no answer. I see we're really high priority uh, guests of yours mm. in this kind of reception. 
Yes. Uh, you know, usually, I mean, within business hours, they're, they're kind of required to be in there. I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna do the, the knock while opening the door. I'm gonna try to do that. Is it try the, try the handle? Mm. Uh, the, the door is completely open and it just swings open easily. Uh, you see that this is these these are Matrius's chambers. This is it's not been disturbed in any way. It looks exactly how it's supposed to look, uh, except he is not there. And uh, there's an open spell book on his desk and there's a cold cup of tea beside it. And there is a half eaten sausage in a bun. Uh, about maybe only three, only one quarter eaten. In fact, like it looks like it was hastily abandoned. Even though it is, you can, you know, Terry, this is one of the good special sausages that they usually sell out of early. So this is not something that somebody would just walk away from. And I say this, this, this is the most untoward thing I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> Well, don't take it too bad, dude. It certainly surprises me. In my experience, academics are usually starving, and for them to leave food behind like this would be a great affront. This is the good stuff. No, you you guys don't understand. You have to get up very early in Candlekeep to get this to get this sausage. I do, I don't I don't know this. There must there is yeah, just an alarm bells are ringing in his head as loud as possible, and he is now on high alert uh, and looking around. <laughs> would you Would you guys like to investigate the room at all? Oh, sure. Yes. In fact, I'm going to investigate it very poorly with my roll of one. Uh, there, it's, it's someone, the sage isn't here. Corey, what did you roll? <laughs> 11, like dipping my finger in the tea and tasting it. Uh, it is uh, milk and two sugars, and it's pretty cold, but not like super cold, not like several hours cold, only like maybe like an hour cold, if you know what I mean. Some charlatan has added milk to this man's tea. <gasps> oh, something foul is afoot. Something unnatural. Is it uh, curdled? I rolled no. an 11. No. Uh, it's just, it seems to be like his coat's hanging up on the, on the hook. Like, his stuff is here, but he is not. Does and the coat fit hope. me? Um, No. Uh, Matrius is, uh, not very tall. In fact, he might be a gnome. <laughs> now that you're trying to try on the coat. <laughs> <laughs> Terry, do you know of any, uh, secret passages in this room, maybe, that they could have slipped out of? Oh, well, uh, there are secret passages aplenty, uh, here in, here in the, the great, uh, uh, fortress citadel of Candleheap. Um, and I know of, of a myriad of them, but, uh, not, not this one. Um, but, uh, to say that there isn't a secret passage in this room would be an absurd thing to say. Of course there is. I just don't, I'm not really sure where it is. Let me just, uh, look around and I rolled a 13 for oh, investigation. Perfect. Uh, you see that there, the book that is open on his desk catches your eye. Uh, and you investigate it. Are you gonna? Do, uh, you're gonna pick it up, and you're gonna see it's a very heavy, thick tome, oh. uh, and its covers are made of ornately tooled leather decorated with gold filigree. And there's a face of a man on the, like a very nice looking face, like a, a, a flattering depiction of a bald guy with a goatee and very intense looking eyes and like a serious eyebrow situation happening on it. And can you make me? Can you make me an intelligence check? I certainly to... can. And while I'm looking at this thing, I've got out my uh, my arcane focus, which was mm. an incredible, evil-looking magnifying glass uh, that I call my Lucky Lou. And uh, <laughs> um, and let's see, if my intelligence check is whew, uh, with that. That is a cumulative six. Looks magical. I bet this is a wizard of some sort. Um, but while you're investigating the book, you see that there is a word written, handwritten into the margins. And uh -huh. the word is scepter. Scepter. Goodness. And I turn to the group and I say, ah, uh, wow, uh, this, this is this is quite a, a tome here. Do uh, any of you uh, uh, have any, uh, I, and I know you're from outside, I should really be the expert here, but to, to be honest, I'm under a little st amount of stress right now, and I'm not I'm not uh, working at my my, my top gear. Speak as out, good man. 
Uh, I'm very sorry. Look at book. Look at book. See what find, please. And I, I hand over uh, and I point out the one word I found, scepter, right there. What's What, what do you make Do you it? say the word scepter out loud when you point it out? I do. <laughs> oh, good. Excellent. That will save some time. So as soon as you say the word scepter, uh, there um, uh, something magical literally happens. In fact, once the word is spoken, shimmering translucent doors appear in the middle of the room, but these are massive doors and this is not a very big room. So the doors start on the ground, but then the doors like just look like they're exceeding through the roof. They're the doors to an enormous like mansion or castle or something like that. Huge double doors. Uh, and then these beautiful shimmering doors appear and they open and they just go into, they stretch into uh, the light. Wow. Well, there's a secret passage. Yeah. Oh this boy. really not to quote. Dwarves made this, this would be, you, 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 at least the doors would fit inside the room. Yeah. Poor craftsmanship. Want to do the thing where you stand on the side, to the side of it and look in front of it and behind it? Is that uh, the thing you can do? Absolutely. You see behind the door, uh, just light. Oh. Just light. And then your brain stops trying to comprehend what's happening because it doesn't seem like the doors are going to a place that should be able to go to. So it's almost like your brain's gone, we'll just put some glowy effects there and we won't notice. Um, I think this is magical. Can you make me a perception check, Corey? Sure. Oh, yeah. 11. <laughs> All right. With an 11, I mean, it's not actually that subtle. You're going to notice those doors are slowly be slowly growing dimmer as you're looking at them. They started out, they were very bright. They sort of exploded with white light, and they seem to be fading a little bit. Oh, no. I think the doors are wearing out. Oh, gosh. Uh, uh, do you say scepter again? Yeah. The doors suddenly become the sort of, they sort of reappear. You restart the cycle and they get very bright. And now that you're watching for it, you see that they start to get a little bit just imperceptibly dimmer after you say that. It's like they're on a timer. <laughs> it's like rewaving your hand in front of an automatic door. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so what we can judge from this particular series of events, whoever was in this room said scepter probably was <laughs> reading aloud from the book at least five minutes ago. Well, um, I, uh, I I hesitate to say for certain, but I think our our, our friend uh, uh, Master Matrix, I think he may have gone through this uh, this shimmering door, the scepter door. This... <laughs> you think I someone, yes, this... an educated person, would just walk into a magical door? Well, um, the stranger things have happened. Um, uh, I, I think, uh, I th and, and this, this person, this person, Matrix, let me tell you, they, they know what they're doing. If they went through the, the weird scepter door, uh, something would, and then, it, then, then uh, I, I trust them. I trust them. Hey, can we say that it makes a little noise every time it starts up and you hear a boom, right? So just revving. <laughs> you are our guide. Are you not Mr. Fizzlewit? Please guide us. Uh, very well. Uh, well, then follow me, and I take out a piece of part parchment pa paper from my scholar's backpack, and I carefully wrap the sausage roll in it because this is just—it's like someone has dropped a gold bar. It's like you can't, you can't. I can't just leave this here. I've got to take it to something to somewhere. And I say, "Follow me," and I approach the shimmering doors and attempt to step through them. He really mm -hmm. likes that sausage. You, are you guys all going together? Yeah. Yep. Behind Mr. Fizzlewit. I of course. I suddenly slip a different business card underneath the big book, the big scepter book, mm. and then follow everyone. Excellent. Uh, you follow and you step through. It seems all very mysterious and magical and stuff like that. But literally, as soon as you step through that door, there's no light behind you and you are just in a mansion. It's not like there's a doorway behind you in a hallway. It's done. Uh, um, uh, uh, so uh, you scepter. <laughs> Nothing happens. Perception Ooh. check. Yep. Perception check, you say. <laughs> Perhaps it's your pronunciation. Scepter. Nothing happens. Eight. Mm. Seven. Sixteen. Sixteen. Twelve. Orvain, this is probably where the wizard went. <laughs> <laughs> well, la-dee-da. So. 
And my powers of deduction have decided that this is where the wizard has gone. Uh, but of all the places you could be going, this is actually okay. You are in a beautiful grand mansion. This is there. The structure is open and spacious, but it's like not ostentatious. And so the walls are like a smooth stone. And as a dwarf, you know that they are incredibly finely worked, beautiful stonework. Now yeah. this is stonework. You but, only have a few small bits of feedback for them, but you know, yes. as a dwarf. Could have uh, been polished a bit more, but uh, otherwise, good start. What's the weather like outside? Oh, funny you should mention that. Uh, if you, When you look out one of the many windows, you see that the outside does not have weather at all. It just has a swirling blue miasma, and it sort of pulsates and glows faintly. Um, there's windows, though, so you could open the window and stick your hand outside. Don't think we're in candle keep anymore. <laughs> and then my little frog that I have in my, my coat uh, goes, Toto, quiet. <laughs> what kind of wizard are we looking for again? You're looking for Matrius the Sage. This is this is some serious stuff. Matrius is like well regarded, but this this seems this is like some nothing I would say that this is this seems more powerful this seems like very powerful magic um and the rest of the mansion is very nice um it has beautiful hardwood floors with like parquet you know they're really nicely done um there's nice rugs on the floor that are like really tasteful you know it's very tasteful like a lot of like, like neutrals and stuff that really coordinates well there's flowers there's decorations there's you know um really nice dark wood furniture in all the standard places that you would have wood furniture in a place like this like beside you is this is a beautiful bench which is upholstered in rich purple velvet and like dark wood that's carved and there's a coat rack and it's this looks like someone's nice ass house basically and it's pin drop quiet all right everyone you know what to do and uh, minty takes his shoes off because he's inside and that's the polite thing to do don't walk around the house with your shoes on are you going right. to sit down on that bench to take off your shoes? Uh, yes. There's cat hair on it. Okay. Is it uh, what color of cat hair? Uh, it looks like. How much do you know about cats? Make me an animal handling check. <laughs> animal handling. Would uh, nature work? Sure. All right. That is, let's see, that is a 21. Okay, not only is this cat hair, you can tell this is the hair of at least three different cats. There is one cat that has long, fluffy black hair. There is one cat that seems to have long, fluffy orange hair. And there is what, another cat that you can't tell the color of because the hair alternates. Looks like maybe a calico or a tabby or something, but you can't be sure. It's just a little, but it's definitely three separate colors of hair. Does uh, does your wizard boss have cats, Terry? Oh, uh, uh, well, my my uh, my immediate superior, uh, uh, the uh, uh, Randall Keith. He um, I don't know if he has uh, pets. He, he's usually too busy working out for any other hobbies on top of his uh, 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 stuff. But uh, but uh, Mat Matrius is uh, a well respected um, um, uh, member of the uh, about, and and he, I'm not really sure sure what his pet situation is. I imagine if he's here, he will be. Um, um, has some business perhaps with the cats perhaps this is all the cats as most things tend to be in my experience it seems to me a wizard of someone of this sort of wealth would be able to afford at least three familiars mm -hmm. so uh hey paul we can actually even bring up the map so uh we've got uh, there's a map that i'm gonna put to, to, make, to make our life easier so you guys are in m1 which is this grand foyer um mm. and so uh where do you want to go you can just refer to the room num r rooms there and you can tell me and uh i'll just describe things as we go along so i've heard that most people when they're lost turn to the right so maybe we should start left should we, should we start right if we think he might have gone right 
what if we think we he thinks we're thinking we would go left? Yeah, what and if then he's trying to double think right? us? Hmm. It always amuses me when non dwarves try to find their way out of things. <laughs> Going to watch for a bit here. <laughs> <laughs> so you're in this beautiful long hallway arched vaulted ceilings with like wood they're 15 feet tall great mansion hardwood floors to the left hardwood floors to the right door basically right in front of you some stairs up uh and uh really nice rugs tasteful rugs so you know if did anybody else take off their shoes or just minty just minty just so just... minty you're silent no one can hear you you oh, guys yeah. only make the softest of tap 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 as like as long as you're walking on the rugs, with, which are clearly put down the center uh, of the of the hallways to cushion sound and to show off how rich and nice this place is. They're all clean. They're in good repair. But like any of the wood floors, when you put weight on them, do they just creak incessantly no. with every step? No, nope, everything seems well maintained. Nice and fresh. They can see that there's a couple of scratches that you think came from a cat. But that's about it. Mm -hmm. um, just... Minty is just going to split the difference and go to M5, which is straightforward. The other ones are going left and right in their thoughts. All right. so. are, oh, so are you are you waiting for anybody else? You're just going to march into uh, to, to room M5. I'm. I imagine that I'm walking between the two of Terry yeah. and Miriam discussing the thing just directly between to the door. And I think as you go past, I'll just shrug and follow you. <laughs> so you all, everybody's going to go in here. Why not everybody come inside? Come yeah, in, sure. Like read you some box text. Boxes. So you notice the room to this, the door to this room is ajar. And, uh, oh, no! but not a lot <laughs> ajar, just like, I don't know eight to ten inches ajar the kind of ajar that you leave a door so a cat can come in and out um you 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 know this minty because of your incredible animal handling check um <laughs> so the entire far wall of this room is floor to ceiling bookshelf even more books are resting on several large scarlet armchairs and small wooden tables and there are several paintings on the walls a fluffy black cat is curled up on one of the chairs so as you enter the room, the cat sits up and meows and walks up to you. Minty pets the cat. All right, make me an animal, uh, an animal handling or a whiz check for petting this cat. Uh, that would be 17. Uh, the cat goes and uh, flops over and uh, lets you give it some tummy scritches and then does that thing where... She weaves in between your legs and marks you as hers. Uh, and uh, <laughs> while you're in this room, she's going to follow you around a little bit uh, and uh, see what you're up to. Uh, so uh, do you want to investigate the room? Hell yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Who is going to investigate the room? Is everyone going to look around? No, I'm going here. to give a thorough investigation of the walls and the floor. All right. Excellent. See. You're going to do the walls and the floor? Yes. And that All is right. a 12 on the die. Okay. Um, on the walls, you see three paintings hanging. There's a landscape with a large green dragon emerging from a grove of pine trees, a study of a pegasus in flight, and a portrait of a unicorn in a wooded glade. Mm. I rolled a six, so I'd like to interrogate the cat. <laughs> <laughs> Hello there, Mr. Whiskers. Have you seen a sage or a seer coming through here? Ow. <laughs> she wants to speak off. cat. Terry? Mm. Uh, I mean, I know some conversational cat, but but I I couldn't really I could I could ask her the cat how much something was, but that's about that's about it. Um, I could try that. Does oh, the yeah. cat speak Elvish? Ooh. I'll try some Elvish. Hello there, cat. Tell me where the man is. Meow. Turns out the cat does not speak Elvish either. Unhelpful. Is, that, is there is anything any... about these paintings on the wall that uh, catch my eye in any way? Mm, they're very nice paintings. 
They don't seem to do anything. Mm. I did roll a 17, and I'd like to look at the desk if there's nothing about interrogating the cat. <laughs> there's nothing. There's like, there's no. Uh, there, there's no desk in here, but there's like little tables for this is like, I guess there would be a desk. Sure. Uh, there's a desk. There's nothing on it. It's clean. Like it's got the, it, there's things on it, but like decorative things like, you know, like a pen holder and mm. other smaller artfully arranged books and a little like potted plant. Um, and, uh, but you do see that almost all of the books in this study were written by the same person. You see, as you're looking around, you're like that. No, 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 no. They all seem to have uh, been written by a powerful mage uh, named uh, Fistandia. Uh, and you look at the bi biography on the back of one of her books. Uh, and uh, she was a priest of, uh, or she is, doesn't say that she's dead, just says she is, present tense in the biography, a, a priest of Mistra. Uh, and uh, and uh, she, uh, she, all of her memoirs are here and all of these things. And uh, do you want to keep investigating? Do you want to keep reading and find out, see what you can find? I would like to. Terry is very much into books. And while approaching the bookshelf, rolled a 19 with a plus 5 to 24. And, <laughs> All right. But then he, he is mostly, mostly interested in exactly what system is used to arrange the books, but he will also take any, any information about the books. All right. Well, perfect. I have some very, I have lots more information for you. So you find out, uh, Minty, from reading uh, uh, Fistandia's uh, autobiography, the joy of extra dimensional spaces. Uh, in exchange for her pious service and achievements in the expanding the arts of magic, Mistia, uh, Mistra granted Fistandia a permanent extra dimensional mansion for her to reside in while, when studying in Candlekeep. This is that mansion. You're in Fistandia's extra dimensional mansion. And fearful that a guest might become trapped in the mansion, she hid the command word that opens the door back out on the spines of seven books in her mansion. And, and and Terry, because you are looking at all of the books, you see that one, there is a book in here that is completely misfiled. And when you take it off the shelf, you see it's got the same cover as the other book with that man with the point, with the sort of handsome but pointy chin, bald head, intense eyebrow situation going on. It's the same guy. And the the this this book only just has the letter I on its spine. That's it. And you open the pages and it's blank. Oh, and uh, and, he, and Terry points this out to these folks. Do you see this? Do you see this mess? This is shameful. How could, how could you have such a clean house and not bother to have your books in some sort of order? Look at this. Also, I think I found a letter. I think it's important. And he, in a huff, he puts it back. Uh, you also notice when you're examining all these books because you got such a uh, such a high check. There's a secret door behind the leftmost bookcase on the far wall, and when the bottommost book in the bookcase is pulled, the bookcase slides forward to reveal uh, reveal a passage behind it. Ooh. So you put so as you're huffily putting this away, you pull another book out, and the, and the, and and suddenly the secret door opens up. So you can now that you see there's like a little like passage down, that suspicious cutout of the map. Uh, and I say, see, secret passages, secret passages everywhere. <laughs> Did the thing that I read about the unlocking word say that we needed the books with us? Uh, no, it just says that uh, fearful that a guest might become trapped in the mansion, Fistandia hid the command word to open the portal to Candlekeep on the spines of seven books in her mansion. So All we need right. a word that's seven letters long and has an I in it. Seems like the sort of thing you'd want to put next to the light switch, like the Wi-Fi password. I I don't think it's a word that's seven letters long. I think it's seven words, so phrase. Oh, no. maybe. Oh, no, perhaps. I don't. Don't just ignore Can me. Can I uh, Arcana to get some information about Mistra? Uh, yes. Uh, but it'll take you, it, because you're so far from home in the extra dimensional space, it's going to take just a second for the Arcana to bring up Google. <laughs> <laughs> Mother of all magic, blah, 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 weave. So it's not important? Uh, not, not, not particularly. Let me just, uh, uh, but the Arcana is I here. Roll the 20. Not uh, a nat 20. 
Oh, it would help if I was spelling Mistra, uh, Mistra Fifth Edition. Here it's we with are. With a Y. Yeah. So I know the word's not Mistra. <laughs> oh. Uh, uh, pronounce Mistra, according to D and D. Forgot, ForgottenRealmsFandom.com. Uh, the mother of all magic was a greater deity and the second incarnation of the goddess of magic after her predecessor, Mistral, sacrificed herself to protect the weave from Carsus's folly. And then it goes on. She's she's quite a big god. Quite quite famous as far as gods go. She's I a guess. very large woman. Yep. Mm. Giant woman. Minty appreciates that. So... Uh, what? So you you've spent quite a bit of time in here investigating. You have not found your wizard, but you have found a secret passage. Would you guys like to go back out and explore the rest of the floor, or head down those stairs? I like the passage, but I what mean, do you guys? Stairs think? are right here. I, yeah. So like, you can't just uncover a secret passage and not go in. Yeah. In which way are the stairs going? They are going down. Correct. They're going down, and this there's a set of stairs me- up. Uh, uh, like from the foyer. This is the natural direction of a dwarf. We'll go down. <laughs> All right, you go down to the secret basement level. <gasps> da, da, da. da da da, which is coming up. Ta da! So those it says you can see it says uh, lower level. So you go down the stairs and you see that there's a little tiny like there's a door in front of you, and then there's a door. Uh, to the like around the corner to the left of you. So where where do you want to go? What room? Eh, what does your dwarf the sense tell you? Right. M seventeen. M seventeen. I like this door. All right, you Orvain, uh, you stride purposely through the door because you like it, and you uh, find yourself in a room that smells of astringent chemicals. You're like, (laughs) there's long wooden tables that stretch across this room, and they're laden with vials, beakers, and flasks holding various liquids and powders. Books are stacked between the glassware and chemicals, and yellowed paper charts and blackboards full of complex formulas cover the walls. Well, this is clearly the work of a wizard, but uh, no wizard to be found. Mm-hmm. Would you uh, like to investigate the room? Hell yeah. Gotta find them books. Yeah. 16? I got a nat 20, so. Oh, damn. Never mind. I'll sit back. <laughs> All right. Uh, Orvain, are you going to look? Terry? I suppose so. Let's have a look at what's on the table. That's uh, five. Five. All right. Well, uh, so Minty, you look around and you're like, wait a minute. minute, 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 minute. Ah, and you know exactly what all of these weird beakers and flasks are for. You, the, you, it's clear that somebody here was trying to transmute various materials into gold. Mm. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of scorch marks on the table and there's some acid splatters and there's like a first aid kit that's like, seen some better days looks like it's actually been on fire at one point um so you're gonna see you, it, 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 maybe not everything was always successful here yeah. but um four clay figures also rest on the table in the middle of the room and they uh sort of one of them is like barely a figure it's kind of just a lump of rough clay and the last one the of the four is so lifelike it could be like uh, like a, a petrified figure. Like it could be something that's been turned to stone. And then the other two are sort of the phases in between, right? Um, so can somebody make me uh, an int check for Arcana? Arcana check? Sure. An Arcana check? Sure thing. Eight. Eight. Oh, these are, wow. That last one's a really good sculpture, but the other three are a bit shit (laughs) (laughs) Uh, i got a 21 on that arcana check oh you've seen books on this before at candle keep these are for uh these are figures that are used for creating homunculuses yeah oh gross uh says terry uh, uh, (laughs) all out of the blue uh looking too close and then backing away oh gross Uh, Orvain, what did you, what did you get on your, in, or you got a five. Five. 
Yes. Five. Uh, but Minty, you uh, since you know you notice these things, you see you see a book that says studies of erosion and placer deposits, the role of fluvial sediments in non-traditional gold deposits and mining. Uh, Orvain, you're a dwarf, and I'm saying this in dwarf-ish to Orvain because I speak it too. Mm -hmm. uh, is this a familiar book to you? You guys like your stone and your gold. Are you making fun? Oh, that is what I'm here for. Give, give, give that to me. Let me have a look here. Yeah, sure. And I hand it to him, but with... I can roll it if you want to. With a bit of sleight of hand, I tuck in one of my business cards into the middle of the book. Oh, I think you can just get away with that because Orvain's very excited to see this book. Okay. <laughs> uh, while all of this is happening, Terry, you also notice that uh, some of these uh, reagents are very valuable and would fetch a lot of gold in Candlekeep uh, for some of these spell pieces. And uh, the, the puzzle book with the letter B uh, is propped up just against a large beaker. You, it's the same thing. The spine just has letter B. Cover's got that dude's face. You open the pages, and every page is just one uppercase B, the letter B. Okay. Well, then I, I find another clue, and I'm very tempted to take the uh, the valuable reagents. And, uh, oh, oh, but there are very hefty penalties if you go against uh, uh, the uh, the employee's handbook and start taking things from people. So I, 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 I reluctantly... Uh, uh, but leave those there. And I say, look, another book! Uh, the B! And this one was kind of in the right order in the stack, so I'm feeling a little better about that. We got I and a B, which also could be words, I guess, technically, to go with Minty's theory. <laughs> I be uh, profan. I don't know. What would one do? So that that's about it in this room, but you are welcome to keep poking around. There's no leftover gold on the table at all, is there? No. But there's there's lots of things that look like they were almost gold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a little bit of platinum there, but it's not gold, so it's not the same. Oh, the the there might you know what? Yes, there's some platinum, but it is lodged in uh, something that is just looks awful. <laughs> it's you're not sure what rock it is, but it's uh, the color of a pimple and the texture mm. of one too. Mm. Mm. Great. Regardless, I will scrape a small amount of the platinum off with the end of my sickle, give it a sniff. <clears throat> eh, it's not from us. Not our platinum. Oh, oh you really are a man of the stone. Uh, I guess we're moving on. Then. Yeah, let's head to M18. I have what I need. I, I'm now looking for a way out of here. All right. Well, so you head to, you head, you, you leave the room, you go back up the narrow hallway, you take the door to the right now, and then you're in a very small hallway and you can uh, go to the end of the hall or you can take the first door you see. You say you're going to take the first door you see and you go into a dark room. It is got stone walls and the walls are quite a bit rougher in this room. Like clearly not as much care was given to this room and there's not much in it. It's not very big. But there is one thing that sort of, I would say, is the focal point of the room, which is a five foot diameter circle of intricate runes that covers the floor. Uh, there's an empty wooden book stand opposite the door and bronze braziers at the other three cardinal points of the circle. Whatever material they contain has long ago burned to cinders, but the room still smells of charcoal and sulfur. Sitting next to the book stand is a very warty toad. And it eyes you balefully. Yeah. Oh gosh. Rotting eggs. Ugh. Are you Sage Matreus? We need to get out of here. Terry, are you gonna sorry. Are you gonna approach the toad or just yell I, at it? I know I will approach the toad. Oh. I'm sorry, I gonna... do not speak toad. Blah. And then you get a little closer. And a little closer. Yes, yes. You and it lunges common. at you. Ah! What is and in fact, it is not a toad at all. It's a horrible little quatsit demon. And you're going to have to roll me some initiative. Ah. Oh, oh, no. Oh, great. 
18. 18. All right, one sec. I'm just putting you putting you into the initiative tracker here. All right, what did you guys, what did everybody else get? Four. Four for Miriam. Oh, dear. Great. I rolled that, but I added three for seven. <laughs> uh, seven, four. And what did you get? Uh, five for me. Five. Perfect. Five and... We were really surprised. Yeah, that was surprising. <laughs> well, how, that's okay. How does your uh, frog feel about this, Terry? I think as soon as we went into the room and we saw the toad, I looked. I looked to Toto, uh, the frog, and uh, and he <laughs> he had crawled all the way back into the pocket, and and it didn't smell right. But I I just I didn't I didn't have the the wherewithal to stop orbing. <laughs> I'm approaching. Yeah, you just look into your pocket, make eye contact with the frog. It does a little mm -hmm. head shake, and you're like, <laughs> "Well, <laughs> yeah, oh, uh, it's oh no." <laughs> All right. Well, the my 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 horrible Quatsit demon is going to Orvane was the person who was coming up next to him, so he's going to try and uh, claw you. He's going to go. All right. Ooh. Uh, and what's your armor class, Orvane? 14. Oh, so a 17 is definitely going to hit then. Yes. All right. So it's going to it's gonna take you quite by surprise, and it's going to go. And it's going to deal. Oh, how exciting. Uh, six piercing damage to you. Ah. And you have to make... Can you make me a constitution save? I can indeed make a constitution save. One moment while I bring up my numbers. All right. Constitution save. Say 15. 15. All right. Uh, you're totally fine. You're not going to get poisoned. Don't worry about it. Oh, excellent. I have resistance against the poison anyway. All right. Uh, so that's uh, that's uh, that's my turn. Orvain, it's your turn now. The Quatsit demon has uh, hissed at you, clawed you, and attempted to poison you. <laughs> and it's your go. <laughs> I'm going to hit it with a hammer. I think that's an excellent uh, course of action. Please make an attack roll. All right, let's hit it with the hammer. Oh, it's unfortunate. That is a 15. Oh, 15 hits it. It's just a tiny little Quatsit demon. Oh, All right. fantastic. Roll me some damage. Damage will be... Let's see here. Roll the die. Maximum on the die. Plus Ooh. four is eight points of damage. Nice. All right. Well, well, you know what? Uh, you just smack this little bastard. <laughs> and uh, you feel like you give him a good strong whack, but he seems to shrug that off. But at the same time, he's a very small little demon, and he lets out like kind of a squeak, and you hear a couple like very thin bones break, like if a bird falls out of a tree. Mm. Uh, and uh, then he's going to hiss. Uh, Minty, it's your go. Am I far enough away for a crossbow? Or, yeah, crossbow to have no penalties? Uh, I don't think so. This isn't a very big room. I think oh. maybe this room is like 15 feet across. What's your, what's your maximum range or your minimum range for a crossbow? Oh, I'd have to look that up. But I, let's just say it's close quarters um yeah. i'm gonna run up to it and one good hammer calls for another i'm gonna use my light hammer all right bludgeon that demon five <laughs> you describe to me how you completely miss this demon <laughs> <laughs> i because i'm running up to it as well i get out my hammer and the momentum of me getting out the hammer and trundling over i trip over um uh, orvain's like ankle and just kind of face plant in front of the demon oh and it says something rude and demonic at you but you don't make it out <laughs> <laughs> Terry, you make it out, uh, and uh, <laughs> and and it says, "Ah, eat floor, bastard!" 
Uh, all right. What are you gonna What are you gonna do to this rude mouth Quatsit demon? I don't approve of the rude mouth Quatsit demon, and um, I I, ha I have I'm not really certain. He, uh, he's, he's thinking back to the region. Says it was an extra dimensional space, but located inside of Candlekeep, and there are there there are very specific things that you are allowed to do if you're in, in the employ of the about. And and he. Magic missile, and he th and he he conjures some <laughs> bolts of energy and, and just fires it at this this poor tempered fro frog. The frog has been brewed. We we have done nothing except wander into some private property and and start taking things. <laughs> but 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 is the the point of the thing is that I do not like this frog demon and I oh. and a toad demon rather sorry yeah and so I will I will cast that. Um, and magic missile never misses. So just ah. how much damage do you do? Perfect. Let's see. That's uh, that's four plus four plus three. Uh, Eleven. Uh, you evaporate the Quatsit demon, and uh, you're pretty sure it flips you off, but like the double British style, as it like goes up into a plume of smoke and presumably returns to the demonic realm, where <laughs> it can be rude with its peers. Uh, and you are now out of con combat. Phew. Oh, I, and I, I turned to Toto and my I hated to do that, Toto. You understand? He could and, and looks and look or or whatever a frog sound yeah. is and, and appreciation. <laughs> Just a tiny bar for what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What it sounds like. Yeah. yeah. I'm just standing at the back of the room, trying to get my rapier out of its sheath. Be <laughs> 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 there in a second. <laughs> The commendable effort, Mr. Fizzlewit. Now, you can only help us use that that to get us out of here. Uh, yes, well, uh, all, uh, as I understand, we only have five more book letters to go, and then we should be able to get out of here, sir, uh, Mr. Craig Corson, and, uh, and, and uh, to you, uh, 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 Irons and Lily, we will we will uh, attempt to, to do our best to, to serve you. And I, I can start. Uh, oh, we, we should probably check this room for a book. Yeah. I should we? Do, yes. <laughs> yeah. There, there are now that you have killed the the frog demon. There is literally nothing else in this room. It is empty. Oh, and it smells like bad. It. it does. It smells like burned frog. Ooh. Oh, I know why I tripped. I'm not wearing shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should all just uh, back away from the room and close the door. Just lock the, the smell dis away. The order displeases me. We should move on. Mm. And we should move on to a quick commercial break. And when we come back, we will continue exploring Fistandia's magical mansion and discovering the joy of extra dimensional spaces. Be right back. <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to Candlekeep Mysteries, the joy of extra dimensional spaces. When we last left our heroes, they had rudely dispatched a demon that was itself quite rude. They had sent it back to the infernal realms where it can go be rude with other demons. Presumably. Who knows what they get up to after they die. I suppose it depends on how bad they are. Who knows? Anyhow, they need to get their way out of this mansion. They need to find seven books with words or letters or something on them. And so far, they've sp they sound one or two that spell I and B, which doesn't stand for International Baccalaureate. It stands for something else, but for that, we'll have to continue to find out. They had explored several rooms, but there is yet one more room in the secret basement they have not entered. Do you wish to go there now, team? Yeah, dude. Yes. Might as well. All right. You enter this room, and this room is like the definitely the biggest, probably. Well... Eh, I'm looking at the map. A tide for M17, but in a slightly different layout, I suppose. And much like the last room you were in, it doesn't honestly smell that great. But the last room kind of smelled like, you know, the, the byproducts of dark summonings. And this one smells like the byproducts of bad things that you do to corpses because the smell of alcohol and brine permeate the room. And glass vessels, large and small, stand in rows on the floor and tables. And they all range from one foot to six feet tall and floating inside each vessel is the preserved body of a creature floating in clear liquid except one of those containers is empty and the lid is like slid off like whatever was in there got out oh no 
I hope it was the frog demon. <laughs> are the... I'd like to examine the tubes and see if they are labeled in any ma- manner. Oh, well, d- luckily for you, Orvain, uh, Fistandia considered herself to be a knowledgeable natural philosopher, and she collected many rare specimens to study, and if she was going to go to all that trouble of collecting them, she was certainly going to label them. So you go down the room and you see a cockatrice, a flump, a giant mm-hmm. fire beetle, a small grill, a myconoid sprout, those. a pseudo-dragon, four severed hands that are still in the same jar, and a slad toad pool. Uh, I'm sorry, a slad tadpole that, uh, when you get up close to it, lunges at you and pops out of the jar. Ah, <laughs> again, with these again, one second. Let me just uh, uh, let me. I got to take something out of. I got to take this out, and you got to roll me some new initiative. Ah. <laughs> I'm not expecting this one. I'm at five. All right, you're at five. Uh, Miriam, did I hear a twenty-two from you? Twenty-two. 22. All right. Uh, Minty? 11. 11. And uh, Terry? 20. 20. All right. Well, uh, Terry and uh, Miriam, you were clearly completely caught off guard by the last time something of suddenly lunged attacked you. And uh, this time you've learned your lesson, even though Orvain hasn't. Uh, we can pull up initiative, Paul. Uh, and in fact, Miriam, you get to go first. So this this slad tadpole is is what has leapt out of the the very helpfully labeled jar, uh, and if you're not familiar with a slad tadpole, they're just like awful like toad like things, and it's like, mm-hmm. and it's gross. So the, they're the size of normal tadpoles, right? Like just this mm-hmm. big. Uh, no, it's about the size of a raccoon, though, so it's not that big. Right. Well, I fluidly withdraw my rapier and stab at the beast, saying, This is the end for you, you gutter-crawling cur. Oh, excellent. That sounds good. What do you care? Why don't you roll to attack it? A twelve! A twelve? You know what? That's a hit! It's a tadpole. It's slimy and was in a jar for a long time. Roll me some damage. Eight! Eight! You not only, you nearly bisect this poor tadpole, and it looks up with you with big, dark, rotten, pissy eyes, and you know that if you hadn't just basically bisected it and severed its spine so now its back legs aren't doing anything and it can't whip you with its tail and putting it into tons of pain, it would try to be eat you. It would try to be eating you. It would be definitely trying to get inside your mouth and eating your tongue, and you can tell just by the way it's looking at you. It's the size of a raccoon. My tongue's... <laughs> <laughs> anyways, anyways, I give Bardic inspiration what? to Terry. <laughs> Thank you. Gosh. Terry looks at you and says, Mmm, delicious somehow. G- <laughs> Gosh, these so this is a tadpole and the other one was a toad. This is very this is very upsetting to Toto, the, the, my, my little frog friend. And and this is like the horrible body horror to this poor frog that is now cowering and, and shaking in, in my coat pocket. And 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 I say, Don't worry, Toto, I'll make the nightmare stop. And I I cast um may, would you say that this is more or less than ten pounds, this thing? Oh, I'd say it's not too much over ten pounds, but it's definitely over ten pounds. Okay, I can't do that. Uh, I'll do, no, it's but good. You I know have to what? Think it's almost been cut in half, so maybe you could just try to grab half, which would weigh less than ten pounds. Make me, make me a roll with disadvantage. A roll with disadvantage uh, yeah, for which means you're gonna roll two, and you're gonna pick the lower of the two numbers to okay. see if you can gra- grab this with mage hand. But you can oh, okay. add d6 to the low one. Yes. Okay, I think I understood that math. So I roll two, I roll, uh, and this is two on the d20s. Two yeah. d20s. Okay, one is a 15. Pretty oh, good. okay, and that's pretty the, good. The other is a four. All so, right, so so far your mage hand is failing to grab this slippery abomination. Uh, dang. You do okay. have bardic inspiration, so you can add six, is it? A or d6. Is it one d6? Uh, one d6. Which one d6 seems risky. The lowest one. Seems risky, yeah. Uh, but I, but I'm sort of committed to doing this anyway. It's either it's it's failing. Uh, shoot. So yeah. So I guess that's what. As I'm okay to fail. Makes it more an interesting story. So let's. So I. So uh, so the 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 I, the disadvantage on the four. Uh, and I 
I, well, I don't know when I'll take this again. So if I if I bump it up to a uh, bump it up to a ten, then plus six, what does that do? But you have to roll this to get a six. So I don't want to use uh, your oh, bardic inspiration. That's right. That's right. Because you so can let's... keep it. Yeah. Okay. And I'll it keep also the bardic... counts for saving throws. Like, say you have to evade something trying to grab your tongue. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. So good idea. <laughs> Terry likes this tug. He likes it where it is. Um, and he. Uh, so I roll that that d6 to add. So that's a four. So that's an eight. That's mage an eight. Hand on this thing. All right, eight mage hand. What I'm going to say happens is that the mage hand. Actually, you know what? I, could you describe to me how you managed to get, how you managed to grapple it but not pick it up? You grab it. I what happens grab, here? I grab it, but not pick it up. Um, yeah. So let's see. So so my spectral mage hand comes out, uh, which is purple, which is nice because that's apparently Terry likes that color. And he goes uh, and uh, and gets the the fighty half, the one that that uh, that's still got some fight in it, and tries, which is probably a mistake. Probably shouldn't have done that. Probably should have gone for the non fighty half. And uh, tries to tries to gr grapple it in its spectral spectral hand and gets it around uh whatever is the um, most dangerous forelimb also a mistake and is is able to sort of pin it to kind of to the ground it's struggling but doesn't really have a good hold of it um and it's just just a mess just a, oh no oh it's uh i'm sorry uh uh terry, terry says oh no it didn't work i'm sorry i'm sorry well, you discombobulated a bit it's gonna yeah. take it's gonna try to take a bite and it's gonna try to bite uh, well, I mean, uh, Miriam, because it's fixated. It needs more tongues. It's only got the one right now. Oh. Uh, so, Miriam, it's going to try to bite you. So, I'm going to I'm gonna roll an attack. AC 13? Uh, uh, you know what? I do actually bite you. Somehow, even though I just got grappled. Actually, you know what? I'll give myself disadvantage because I did get grappled. Oh, and I'll say I slightly miss, but I get very close. <laughs> I see my tongue flash before my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> All the happy memories I've had with my tongue. <laughs> you do notice, though, as as it gets quite close to you, lunging at your lips, just you feel the breeze wash up over your face, that its back half is really hanging by a thread, like anyone could take that out. Uh, Minty, it's your turn. Well, you know what would get all that tadpole oil out of the tadpole is a good hit on the noggin with a hammer that is a 18. uh you roll me some damage hammer. you definitely hit it with an 18. bludgeoning 1d4 4. all right you uh it does not matter that the back half is mostly deconstructed um because the front half is uh now been flattened quite effectively uh and neither half is arguing anymore uh it splats to the ground and is no longer a, a menace and you are out of the fight and i press to digitate the bad smell away <laughs> Uh, your prestidigitation is not strong enough to cover the entire bad spell of this room, but there's no smell around you. At like a good six feet around you does not smell like preserved horrible things. Toad oil. Yeah. yeah. Oh god. Poor Toto. Poor Toto. I just stroke the pocket that he's in. It's gonna be okay, buddy. It's gonna be alright. Is it? Is it like a waxed pocket or something on the inside? Yes, it's made. Uh, it's it's been treated specifically so that all of the the various amphibian slimes are are taken care of. So it's and it's in a nice sort of moist, warm environment that that uh, Toto likes to be in. Okay, okay, good. Well, that was unexpected, but at least we didn't have to fight the dragon with Unix administration privileges. <laughs> I'd like to check the room for any possible books that may be lying around. Oh, excellent! All right. Um, let's see. What do you find here? Uh, there are no other books, but are you going to get closer to anything else in this room? At this point, I'm, I'm very wary of approaching any of the tubes. All right. Uh, I would, do you want to, do you want to investigate the empty tube? I mean, the empty tube seems fine to investigate. What's going uh. to pop out of there? Well, uh, luckily for you, nothing can pop out of there because it's already popped out. Uh, the label on the tube says Mimic, 
by the way. Hmm. Friends, I've discovered what I think they call a clue. Oh, yes? There is at least one treasure chest within this particular mansion that uh, <laughs> would be a very dangerous uh, acquisition target. Ah. Good to know. Um, Great. Great. Well, I can tell you guys, sort of as, as your DM, out of character, you have found everything that you can find. Uh, except more trouble. There's always more trouble down here, <laughs> but okay. there's no more books down here. So my feet are uh, getting cold. Let's go upstairs. All right. Good idea. Yeah. Back I'm just upstairs. pale and sweating in the hallway outside. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are back. You go back up the stairs and you find yourself back in the study. Uh, the cat that was uh, that was sleeping in there before, the large fluffy cat's like, Brr! when when you come back and is like, happy to see you. Didn't seem like it was particularly worried that you went down there. Uh, you know, it's cat. It doesn't really care about you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you leave that room and you come back into the beautiful grand hallway. You're basically at M1. There are stairs to your, there are stairs slightly to your right. There's a big hallway down to the right that leads to many things. And there's a hallway to the left that leads to many things. Uh, why don't we go left? Why don't we go further left? I like left. That that sounds wonderful. What do you want to go to the furthest room and work your way back, or do you want to? What, where do you want to start here? That seems logical. Voice in the head. Yes, yes. let's go to the farthest room and work our way back. Start at M two and go up the numbers. All right, great. M two. You're gonna get outside, and wow, whoever decorated this patio had amazing taste. There's some really nice furniture out here. There's like one of them low tables that ha that you know, you could put drinks. There's like, you know, potted plants. There's uh, like a, an umbrella to shade you from this weird glowing ball that's casting what amounts for natural light in here because the rest of the Glaston patio is just pure blue miasma as far as the eye can see outside. Uh, but there's a patio door if you want to step outside into the miasma and investigate it no no <laughs> no it's fine <laughs> are there are there any particularly interesting <laughs> plants out on this patio since uh minty is a rancher he knows his plants these are all uh plants chosen to look good it like they're like instagram looking good plants they're like giant philodendrons and like they look it looks beautiful and tropical in here someone had a like it's really nice despite the fact that there's a horrible swirling miasma of unpleasantness out just outside mm -hmm. you almost forget about it yeah. any reading books on the tables perhaps uh there is uh there is a copy of infernal homes and gardens <laughs> Terry is very interested in this book, goes over, opens the, the first page, and what does he read? Uh, it, is a, uh, it is a feature on a casino in the fourth level of hell that has just been renovated. Uh, and uh, they're, doing a, they're doing a feature with the, the owner, who is this uh, Archduke Gregor, Gregor Athanol, and uh, he, he's talking about how he's turned his life around. And there's an, ad, there's an advertisement, like a full page advertisement of opposite that article, which is like uh, image consultation services. And there's a bunch of like, there's like two very classy looking tieflings that are offering their services there. Uh, and one's older and one's younger. And it's like going like this and holding a mobile phone, but you don't know what that is. So you're just like, what's this? That's weird. <laughs> Well done. I enjoyed that very much. Uh, <laughs> uh, but aside from the excellent magazine and good taste in patio furniture, there's actually nothing interesting out here. Mm. Mm. So, M3? M3. M3. Uh, so this, as opposed to the other room filled with books, that was merely the study. This is the library. You can tell because it's bigger and even yet more serious about its books tall shelves filled with books line the walls of this room and then two more shelves run through the middle of the room with a 10 foot aisle wide aisle a 10 foot wide aisle between them several stacks of books are piled high throughout the room and there are small reading desks with cozy scarlet chairs in the corner um 
Terry, uh, you know, because of course you work at the largest library in Faerun, that this is a phenomenally huge collection of books for one person to have. This is a, this is, this is a lot of books. Okay. Terry's opinion of the person who lives here has gone up and, and, uh, and, and he goes, no wonder that one book was out of place. Look how many they have. Mm. Gosh. All right. So, uh, who wants to investigate? Make me some investigate checks. Let's all do it at once. Six. Just going to casually browse around, look at the spines of the books. All right, you find, uh, you find, Miriam, a really amazing selection of Chaltian poetry. Oh. And you get completely worked up reading this Chaltian poetry. And we'll come back to you later uh, while everybody else Never investigates. Never thought of dinosaurs that way. <laughs> um, Minty rolled an 11. He is going to go over to one of the Reading Nook things. And if there is a recliner... He's going to recline on it mm -hmm. and take a cold one out of his uh, knapsack, crack it open, and just kind of scan the room. All right. How are you walking through the room? Are you just going to walk right through the middle of the room? If he has to, to get to the reading nook, yes. Uh, so not with caution, then, is what you're saying. <laughs> nope. <laughs> All right. We'll get back to you in a second. But let's just hear what... We'll, we'll come back to you. But Orvain and Terry, what did you find that might have been interesting? I've investigated at a 14 level. Oh, a 14. All right. Uh, so, Orvain, while you're looking at a shelf, you notice that there is a, a book just like the other two books that you guys have found, but it's very high up on a shelf and you can't reach it. Ah. And it, you can see uh, you can see that it has the letter R on its spine. Mm. So now so so now you've got a rib. <laughs> <laughs> Friends, I have found an R. Uh, and Terry, what's what's uh, what's your what are you see? What's your investigate? Uh, Terry is uh, has got a um what did he roll here? I think he, he rolled a, I think he rolled a 17. Um, and he uh, goes to, as he is very detail minded, goes to the first book on the far left and starts reading each title progressive in full and inspecting it one by one. And it's a very slow, slow process, but Excellent. he starts to see what uh, specifically to see how they've ordered the books. All right. So, uh, so are you, do you like starting on the wall or starting in the shelves in the middle of the room? Probably starting on the wall, you would oh. probably go to whatever seems like square one and, and, and starts progressively through there. Excellent. You're going to have an amazing view of what's about to happen, actually, then, Terry. Uh, because what happens is as you go over there uh, to look at these books and start at the beginning, you, you sort of notice that uh, Minty is walking through the middle of the library and you see one of those huge 10-foot tall bookshelves laden with books start to tip over and look like it's going to fall on Minty. Uh, do you... Uh, uh, but but because you are able to watch this, you can warn him and and perhaps what do you say? I I say I say Minty roll. Uh, and that is in fact good because Minty, could you make me a dexterity check, please? Uh, Would have been better if it was a one. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Dexterity. That is a six total. That, that's a six. Um, well, you know what? I'm going to say that you completely failed that dexterity check, but because Terry yelled at you, you're able to avoid it because that bookshelf topples down right where you're going to be. But because you had a bit of warning, you're able to sort of cover your head and you are buried in books and you are like, you are knocked prone, but you are not crushed underneath the bookshelf. Uh, but you are under some rubble and there is a bookshelf over top of you. And in fact, uh, do you know uh, how this happened? How this happened was that we have to go back to initiative uh, because, oh my god, I, oh, I forgot to put my, I forgot to roll initiative for my animated swarm of books that's attacking you guys. Animated Ooh. books! Ah, book I thought books were my friends! Why right. did it have to be learning? Oh, they rolled so, they rolled so well, too. Excellent, which makes sense. So give me a second here, and I'm going to add my books And, uh, oh, wow, I can't type under pressure, you know. And they rolled a 16. 
for their initiative, which Great. is pretty good. Uh, what did you guys roll? 23. Oh, 23. All right, Terry, what do you got? 10. 10. Minty, what do you got? 13. 13. And... I, I too, have rolled 23. 23. All right. Uh, Orvain and Miriam, you guys work it out. Uh, who, uh, uh, who between you goes first? Me. Correct. Great. That's perfect, because that's the order you're on in the initiative tracker anyhow. Let's bring it up. Miriam, this big hole, that what looks like a like a like an animated stack of books, it's like a bunch of books came alive and decided to attack you, has, decided, has come alive and decided to attack you. What are you going to do? Smoothly draw my rapier and attack, saying, soon you'll be wearing my sword like a shish kebab. All right. Roll me some damage. Or roll Just me straight an attack. To damage. Oh, lovely. Oh, no. Uh, 16. 16. You know what? I should have just said it because, you know, they're books. It's not like they're like that armored. Uh, so now roll me some damage. Fives. All right. You whack at some books and you neatly bisect a tome that says Luring Humans to a Grisly Demise, Volume 1. And I give <laughs> bardic off. inspiration to Orvain. Orvain, it's your turn. I will strike at them with my coke sickle. All right, get it. 19 on the die plus 6 is a 25. You absolutely s just baseball bat wallop that ba stack of books. Roll me some damage. Another 8 points of damage. 8 points four of damage. 4 on the die plus 4. Perfect. Uh, wait, Miriam, did you do 4 points of damage? 5. Five? All right, perfect. Orvain, describe how you scatter this stack of books so it is no longer animate and it is in fact now just books again. I, I raise my sickle in the air. Tap it twice with my hammer to remove any of the uh, unnecessary uh, soiling upon it and bring the sickle down, catching several books with the point. Thus skewering the books, I shake them off scattering the pages to the wind and frightening small animals that may be nearby. And in my, uh, in my triumph, I yell, Birdman! I'm pretty sure that's what the password is at this point. Birdman! <laughs> <laughs> no? Well, nothing happens when you yell Birdman. Uh, the books go back to being books, so we can go out of combat again. Uh, and uh, in fact, one small furry animal a fluffy orange cat with very long hair is like, Meow. and it's not like that scared, but it's just like, oh, there's too much going on in this room. And there's so shuffles off and goes down to the right. You see, you see it head right. So it's not going to the patio. It's going the other way. Um, so anyhow, that's what happens there. And then the books fall and you're fine. Uh, oh, but you might want to help up. T Minty. Terry, Terry runs over to Minty and starts uh, t very carefully taking the books off of Minty and checking the spines and seeing if there are any dog-eared pages and putting them back and really trying not to look at that book that got bisected, very much averting his eyes to that. Because, uh, uh, Mr. Irons, are you all right? Are you okay? I would like to ask, does Minty, in a very cinematic kind of reveal... Reveal that he is curled into a defensive posture around one of the weird wizard books. Sure, that happens. <laughs> Great. What book is it? What book is it? Yeah. Whatever the one that we needed was in this room, hopefully. <laughs> It was up on a high shelf, and you know what? I'm gonna say I'm gonna say that can be it. It's your R book. It cl it almost clobbered you, but you caught it. Job done, group. You're welcome. <laughs> Good job. Three letters, four to go. And uh, Minty stick. now cracks open the cold one. <laughs> mm, ribeyes. <laughs> could be ribeyes. Could be ribeyes. Um, this, this is like you're listening to uh, Wheel of Fortune with a picture off. <laughs> just, just what we don't know what order they're in or what blank spaces there are. It's just... Perhaps we should follow the cat. Good idea. Good idea. Good idea, Mr. Crankhorson. But to, uh, let's follow this kitty. 
All right, you leave the library. But I want to uh, see how the light glistens off the pyrohydras on the flame peaks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just take the book. <laughs> I can just take the book. Stealing is okay. <laughs> All right. No, wait, no. Unless it's gold, in which case it is a crime. Most high. We'll just say it got damaged in the melee. The melee in the library. All right, so you're gonna you're you're gonna take your your book of Chaltian poetry, uh, and uh, you you can refer to that whenever you like. For uh, and I'm gonna give you, in fact, one bardic inspiration that you can just bestow upon yourself at a at an opportune time because the speech of the dinosaurs has so stroked your soul, Miriam. Evocative. So you head down. Uh, would you like to check out room M4? Sure thing. Mm -hmm. All right. So you go into this room, and uh, this room is, uh, well, this is the exercise room. Uh, but exercise in not like a, you know, Peloton kind of way, as in like, a, I'm a powerful wizard and I need to defend myself. Uh, because this room contains a battered wooden mannequin and a weapon wrap rack that holds staffs and daggers, all lit by indigo tinted light that streams through a window. Uh, the floor is stained and scorched, and at the far end of the room, a broom hovers in the air, sweeping the floor by itself. Oh, dear. Terry looks around for mice and robes and blue hats. Mm. <laughs> there are no mice, but there are several, uh, like, deep gouges in the floor. Mm. Uh, oh, dear. As From the broom? <laughs> As Minty walks in, he tips his hat to the broom. Uh, the broom does not acknowledge you and continues sweeping the place so it's not dusty. Uh, there's like posters on the walls of like good fencing positions and like, you know, form no-nos and stuff like that. It's very like practical in here and there's, there's weapons. There's like four of everything. Is there at least one glistening bronze individual that is just doing like a charles atlas pose on a beach one oh, poster the, of that in the posters yeah. um no but there is a motivational poster and it's it's one the one with the cat and the branch and it says it should say hang in there uh but it just says uh do magic instead because they haven't really like gotten a good handle on what a motivational poster should be in the forgotten realms <laughs> but it, you get the, the the intent does it look like one of the cats that we've already seen no okay <laughs> i mean not i mean it could be a cat that lives here but it's not the orange or the black fluffy cat um it's just a cat as far as you can tell gosh uh I'm going. I'll, I will roll an, an investigation to see if there are, are any books lying around. There's no books in this room. I can tell you that now. Okay. It's just mm. weapons and an animated broom sweeping by itself at the other end of the room. I see. I, I say we move on, folks. I agree. All right. Look at that. I don't, uh, so you've already been to room M5. Uh, would you? What room do you want to go to next? James Bond. M6. M6. Well, this door is ajar, and in fact, this is the door that all the cats are going to, because this is the kitchen! Mm. Ah. Mm. So, uh, now, and, and you can tell that, not only because cats are drawn to it, because even as you get up to it, it, start, it smells really good, because the aromas of cooking permeate this kitchen. A large iron stove takes up one wall, and the rest of the room is filled with large tables and racks lined with hanging pots and pans and cooking utensils. And everything is really clean. Uh, and it is Real, everything is really clean here because uh, there's two homunculi who are working in the kitchen. And uh, they are these ones. Most homunculi can't speak, but these ones can. So you can come up to them and say hello. Are these homunculi as in grotesques? Or are these homunculi as in literally just a regular looking person, but small? <laughs> Uh, well, make me a perception check, or make me a remembering what you saw downstairs check, however you want to apply your stats to that. I'll just... Are they spewing water? Uh, that's 16. <laughs> All right, so remember you saw all those forms, and one looked like it like uh, looked 
totally realistic uh, and it was like a small winged thing. That's what these things are. And they sort of like, they come over and they flap over and they go, hello, welcome to the kitchen. I'm cumin. And the other one goes, I'm coriander. That's really the name in the book, Cory. <laughs> <laughs> How can we Representation. be of help? <laughs> How can we be of help to our honored guests? Cooking, cleaning, mending your clothes? Welcome! Well, if you Spice Girls would be so kind as to point us in the direction of Sage Matreus, that would be most helpful. I don't know who that is. Oh, I think he might mean the person that came in here earlier. Oh, I don't know where he went. We don't leave the kitchen, unfortunately. So we don't really know. But, you know, uh, uh, he we offered him some food and some water or some drinks and to mend his clothes. And he was just muttering something about needing to find an exit. Mm -hmm. Some people these days, no manners. And how long ago did they pass through? Oh, gosh. Uh, I don't know. Uh, right before we were starting to work on today's chive buns. Yeah, the chive buns. Ooh. No, I had already chopped the chives, but we were going to grate the butter. Right, we were grating the butter. Yes, right before we worked on the chive buns, but before we start working on the fresh lemonade. Would you like some lemonade? So the trail yes, is probably still as warm as these girls' buns. The we must move. Uh, they, they come back startlingly quick with uh, a tray of lemonade, uh, and that's four glasses for everyone and a little plate of cookies. Uh, anybody want to make me a perception or like an investigate, uh, looking at food check? Eating the food check. Yes. Yeah, you could, you investigate could... deliciousness. I'm just going to investigate uh, these cookies with my mouth. Like, I mean, I got a 22, so if there is something wrong, I'll know, but I'm taking stuff. Hey, you, uh, know, you guys all know the password to leave this place, and is it library? Nothing happens when you say library out loud, and they say, I don't know what you mean by a password. We're homunculi. We're just, but we we're created here to look after the place. That's right. Fistandia. Fistandia created me, and right. And I was created by Freyot. That's right. Hey, Terry, do you want to make me a uh, uh, um, an arcana check, I suppose? Terry would. And as soon as Terry has seen the homunculi, uh, he is, for reasons I myself have not figured out, he thinks they're gross. And so he <laughs> he has, he is, he's sort of standing in the door frame, sort of one eye looking in, going, uh, uh, observing, and tr really trying not to be seen, but he is definitely, but he's definitely paying attention to what's happening in the room and we'll do a, was it an arcana check, did you say? Or a, yeah. what was that? Uh, okay. arcana. Um, that's a 15. That's a 15. All right, so you know two things. You've just passed this check, actually. You know two very important things about, you know, three very important things about homunculuses. You know four very important things about <laughs> homunculuses. <laughs> One, the first, the first thing is that a master can only have one homunculus at a time, which is why one of them said that one was created by Fistandia and the other one was created by Freyot. I don't know who Freyot is. Neither do these homunculuses, by the way. They're just, they're gormless. Um, <laughs> and the second one is that if you die, your homunculus dies. So the fact that these homunculuses are still flapping around doing their things means that Fistandia and Freyot, wherever they are, are alive. Three, homunculuses make delicious looking caramel shortbread cookies, which is what these cookies are, by the way. Got a little dusting of sugar on top. Very nice. Uh, and four, uh, even though they make delicious looking caramel cookies, you are still grossed out by them. <laughs> Just uh, seeing you turn us these cookies to ash in my mouth. We must, we must find what we are looking for, despite your, your hospitality. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. The, the homunculuses do not know what you mean when you're talking about the books with the letters. You can, mm -hmm. I, I'm going to shortcut this whole thing. They're not going to have anything to contribute there. Um, That's all right. just, it's a good thing I wasn't talking to them. Talking uh, to these people here. Ah, uh, oh. yes. Yes, I, th I think we should go in, in search of the, and he's, again, just in the doorway, not just very much turned away. Yes, I think we should go away. Yeah, um, there's a door just, right here. We can just walk through mm. this room into the other doorway. Are you referring to the door to the, I want to say, west or the northern door towards uh, M7? It looks like east to M8. 
Uh, Miriam, as you pass through the homunculuses flat beside you, you say, Can we get you a sandwich for the road? Absolutely. Let us pack you a lunch. Let us roast you some beef. Oh, yes, please. Oh, excellent. We'll get right to it. Flap, 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 flap. And they take off. Uh, as they go by, uh, they, they go to all of you and they say, Can we get you anything? Uh, uh, Terry, with his head just, just right down, looking at the floor, said, I would like one cookie, please. One of your delicious cookies. And holds out his hand with his eyes closed. Absolutely. Somehow they managed to wrap up a stack of three cookies in a beautiful linen napkin tied with a ribbon in that time. And they present it delicately into your hand. And they say, please let us know if you want anything in a thermos to go. Thank you very much. And Terry feels, and they've got little wings. Is that yep. right? Ter Terry feels one of the wings just brush his face ever so slightly. And he, he heaves, dry heaves, and says, I'm fine, I'm fine. And then it follows everyone else out with the cookies, putting them in his pocket. <laughs> As we're leaving, Terry, or not Terry, Minty takes one of the lemonades, tips it up, pours the rest of his cold one into it, walks out the door drinking it. <laughs> the rancher's Arnold Palmer. Delicious. Yeah. Uh <laughs> Orvin simply simply remembers to tap the believe sign that is above the door on the way out of the kitchen. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, right above the cat bowls and the live, laugh, love. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> so anyhow, they the 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 uh, cumin and coriander call back to you. Let us know if you want lunch as you leave, and you go into the next room, uh, which is the dining room. So this is a nice room because large windows form the entirety of one wall, uh, looking out onto three planted beds that are filled with uh, vegetation. Uh, and in this room, another one of those like weird magical chandeliers sort of like or hang outside to like the like glowing globes that make the the plants grow. So that's like lots of plants out there. And then in this room, you have a, a beautiful uh, crystal chandelier that's hanging down as well, but this is like for a formal dining room. And then it's a really nice, like super long, fancy table, like you would see in like one of them Downton Abbey kind of things, you know, and then there's, there's a table runner and there's silver out and there's a little bowl of bread just, you know, and some buns and some butter and stuff like they're setting the table for lunch. Uh, you know, maybe that's what that chivey smell is. Maybe these are those biscuits I described earlier. You can investigate that. Uh, there's, table settings out, pictures of cream and stuff like that. And there's six chairs around the table. And then there's a seventh chair alone in the corner. With a cat on it, perhaps? There is no cat on any of the chairs. But a lot of cat hair. Uh, there is not so much cat hair on these chairs, actually. It's a good question. Is there anything particularly that is different about the uh, chair in the corner than the ones around the table? I would say the chair in the corner looks completely normal. And one of the chairs around the table looks like it's got a big gouge out of one of the legs. Mm. Interesting. Huh. Are there any obvious places for books? There are no obvious places for books. Not even on a chair for someone short to sit on? Nope. Hmm. As uh, Minty is just scanning the room, he prestidigitates his uh, Arnold Palmer, I guess, to be about 30% sweeter. Because mm. no one knows how to make a good prairie lemonade. You got to <laughs> add like five pounds of sugar to it. And he keeps Perfect. drinking it. <laughs> you, you hear quietly Cumin whispering from the doorway, your preferences are noted. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. See, gross, right? And he turns the other, it's people, it's gross, right? I can't be the only one. Gross, right? <laughs> oh, these scones are delicious. I, the food is excellent. I give them that. I give them that. They're very nice, but they're also for, just, right? Oh, God. They right. do tend to be a little bit upsetting, yes. <laughs> Are you guys going to do anything? Grab any of this surely valuable silverware and put it in your pockets? Take some more scones, look at the chairs, touch I'm things? Already, I'm already thieving a book. Perhaps if we were to... Uh, it's, I mean, 
let's have a better look at the silverware, maybe at the plates. There must be some form of writing around here that might point us in the right direction. Is there a menu? Uh, there is a menu for today, and in fact, it's like a it's a that says lunch uh, at Fistandia's mansion, and it says uh, chive and cheddar scones, uh, sour cream infused butter, uh, and uh, then it says carrot and parsnip puree soup, creme fraiche drizzle, roasted rye crouton. Uh, and then it says uh, crumbled tofu and, oh uh, God, what other vegetable I haven't used? Crumbled tofu and tomato bruschetta. Mm, wow. Balsamic reduction, uh, my micro mouth basil. Is, my mouth especially waters at the mention of a root vegetable stew. Uh, so this is a very nice, uh, this is a very nice vegan. Mm -hmm. Oh, I guess it's not vegan because I said there was better. But it's a very nice vegetarian uh, menu, uh, and you can see that uh, you can see that there's a cat on the table actually, uh, and the cat's not interested in any of this because there's no meat in it. <laughs> what, which color of cat? Which? Uh, this is this is the mottled cat. So we'll say this one is gray and white, and it's got very long hair. Mm -hmm. Very soft. Very soft. Mm -hmm asleep okay as minty uh, is very lightly petting the, the asleep cat uh he's scanning outside the window to the planters uh you don't see anything out there it just looks to be these big lights and garden okay doesn't look like there's any discarded books out there so oh Keep and moving. i feel this room may be host to a disguised mimic I see you in the corner there, chair. You're not fooling anyone. Are you going to get close to any of these chairs? Certainly not the one that I have accused of being a mimic. Okay, well, that one's all the way in the corner. So, you know, do you feel like safe around all of the chairs around the table, though? Mm. Now that you brought up the idea of a, a mimic, Orvain, uh, since you did take a couple hits, downstairs maybe let's just leave there's no there are no books here agreed agreed as you guys leave the chair with the uh, scratched leg kind of sags a little bit <laughs> <laughs> <I knew> it. <laughs> you, hear, you hear it like you hear an almost disappointed noise as you uh, uh go back uh so do you leave out the dining room or do you go back through the kitchen i would like to go back through the kitchen because i'm like almost agreed. out of lemonade i need like oh. a top up Excellent. All right. Also, there's to be a pantry there we have not uh, yeah. examined yet. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, Terry, are you joining your friends? Terry's gonna hang back. Terry's gonna. Terry's gonna just just go back. Go back out into the the sort of M one hallway. Just, you know what? I'm just holler if you need me. I'm 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 just uh, these carpets are really plush and nice, and I just want to feel them with my hands and and, and sandaled feet. All right, perfect. Okay, so you can go back and wait, and you will wait. And the only thing that's going to happen to you is you're going to see, uh, you're going to see a gin the ginger cat walk back out of the kitchen and like go upstairs. Okay. Um, it's going to ignore you unless you stop to pet it. In that case, it will get pet by you until it's ready to move on. Yeah. I'll give it a little scratch. Little All one. right, hey kitty. See, you pet that cat. Meanwhile, you guys are going to go back through the kitchen, and Coriander and Cumin are so excited to see you. And in fact, while you have been in the other room, they have sandwiches for you. Yes. Um, so uh, they, we didn't know what kind of sandwich we wanted, so we've made a variety. This is egg salad. This is tuna niçoise on a sandwich for some reason. And this is your classic ham and cheese. Which would you like? All of them? Yeah. All right. And they pack you a huge, delicious lunch. Can we top you up on your lemonade? Yes, please. Glug, 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 glug. Full glass of lemonade with a garnish and a straw. Minty, what do you want? <laughs> Minty takes a pitcher of lemonade, cracks open a new one, and just puts the bottle into, like, upside down into the pitcher. And oh, perfect. Like, yeah, great. Walks away with it. All right, excellent. Uh, they, as you walk away with the pitcher, suddenly the other one appears, but like one of the one of those homunculi appears behind you with another pitcher. Oh, I'm so glad we made so much more cumin. Me too, coriander. Flap, flap. We're gross homunculi. How's it going, Orvain? What can we get you? I simply like passageway to your pantry, please. This is oh, a, your food excellent. is, as I say, 
most tasteful, but your appearance again, I must I must reiterate, is the exact opposite. Oh, fantastic. That's where we keep all the good snacks. Would you like the beef jerky? Flap, 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 flap. And jerky is indeed one of my favorites. Things to consume as a snack. <gasps> oh, excellent. They hand you an enormous bag of beef jerky. Before I eat, may, may, I, I would like some sort of a, what do you say? A promise that this is in fact beef. Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's beef, absolutely. Fantastic. It is. It's not like trick food or anything. <laughs> I can look at it if you want to. We make it at a ranch too. Fantastic. Now, I'd just like to examine the uh, the pantry to see if there's anything in, of, of note in here that might right. seem out of place for a pantry. Roll me an investigate check. There is a 14. All right, for the 14. Okay, this is indeed where they keep the good snacks. You've got your honey cashews. You've got your chopped chocolate dipped granola bars. Uh, you've got uh, little tiny personal tins of Pringles. You've got anything that a mid-level celebrity could ever want on a rider. <laughs> Take and go packs of hummus and crackers. I am indeed going to grab a couple of the small packages of the sweet and nuts. All right, perfect. Okay, uh, aside from that, uh, and a cat who uh, is just hanging out in here, um, there is nothing in here. Has anyone been investigating the cats for any particular writing or perhaps microchips which may pose a clue? Do, would you like to investigate the cat? I'm going to investigate the cat myself. All right. Roll me an animal handling check. Ooh, excellent. <laughs> you <scores>. failed. <laughs> animal handling plus the 18 on the die is 22. 22. Oh, my God. You pick up this cat, and it melts into your arms, and it nuzzles up against your chin, and it just wants some love. It's a very sweet cat. Yes. And it goes, brrrr, and it starts Who's purring. Good, good it a rag doll, I see. It's, yes. it's well you? cared for. It's got, it's got long hair. It's got no collar. It's not too thin. It's not too fat. It's very healthy and well-loved. No markings of any kind. Uh, just the just its fur, which is it's a tabby cat oh, with like a go. white ruff, and it gets down and goes Bloop. and hops down, <laughs> walks out of the pantry, and uh, goes over to the food dishes. Hey, uh, mm. human and coriander. Yes. Where are the facilities? The bathroom. If you'd like to call it that. Some uh, people prefer a toilet or restroom. Oh, outer room. <laughs> Oh, Miss Fastidia's chambers are upstairs. That's probably where you want to go. We don't have to make those kind of deposits. That's right, we're homunculi. We don't pee or poo or even eat, but we just feel this need to do to make food for you. We live vicariously through you. We do, we do, we do, we do. Can we get you anything? Can we get you anything? Go upstairs for the toilet. Yeah, I think I'm currently full up on the lemonade, but I, I will be back. <laughs> Let's right. leave this room. <laughs> None of that's in the book. I just think it's funny. Uh, it's good, yeah. Um, so uh, the only thing you have left to explore is upstairs. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a perfect time for us to take our next commercial break. And when mm -hmm. we come back, we will find the upstairs part of Fastidia's magical mansion and discover yet more joys of extra dimensional spaces. Hello, we are back. When we last left our heroes here at Candlekeep Mysteries, the joy of extra dimensional spaces, they had just discovered Fistandia's kitchen, which is staffed by two extremely enthusiastic but disgusting homunculuses that wanted nothing else but to feed and entertain our guests and to treat them right and to do like a real Beauty and the Beast kind of song and dance number, except it's just two fleshy gross things flapping through the air and, and it wasn't, you know, not magical dishes and... Beings Anyhow, of nothing but hovering feculence. Pretty much, but also real nice lemonade, cookies, sandwiches, whatever. Uh, Miriam, you're Die. now in possession of a complete packed lunch with three kinds of sandwiches. Some with the crusts cut off, and some crusts cut at diagonals and like uh, rectangles for extra visual flair. Uh, with a small uh, little snack of some fresh grapes and a couple chocolate cookies, different cookies for dessert. Uh, Minty, you have your own pitcher of lemonade mixed with beer, which you're calling a prairie palmer. Uh, Orvain, you've received a nine pound 
bag of beef jerky, which is an odd size. Uh, Terry, they gave you three delicately wrapped cookies. Who ate some food? I believe I did try the beef jerky, yes. All right. Uh, you just tried a little bit of it, so uh, you feel quite nice. Uh, Minty and Miriam, you both regain five HP if you've lost any. Nope. If you haven't, you're still at full health and you're full. Great. Uh, but actually, when we last, last left our heroes, Miriam, you were expressing quite a desperate need to find some facilities, correct? Yeah, and after that, I might take these sandwiches and this book and this lemonade out onto the patio for just a picnic. Mm. Perfect. So uh, the, they, they said that you'd want to be look for, for Mistress, uh, Mistress Vistandia's chambers, which are upstairs. So, Paul, if we can get our upstairs map. I like to assume that upstairs is only one room. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> what just oh, a no. bathroom <laughs> so i assume you go... she has a chamber pot under her bed like <laughs> like a studio yeah. apartment it's, it's a one full room but just a toilet in the corner <laughs> yeah well it's not Privacy it's not curtain. on this map but i can tell you she actually has a very nice bathroom and because it's a, an extra dimensional mansion and you can do whatever you want it's one of those things where you've set up with a tub in the middle of the bathroom like which is fabulously impractical but looks great it's not just like a plank of plywood with a hole cut in the middle suspended above nothingness. Absolutely yeah. not. These are heated marble Carrera tiles. Uh, one of them freestanding square tubs because that's more mm. architecturally striking. Uh, you've got his and her sinks, uh, and lots of mirrors, good light, uh, skylight open to the miasma though, so still unsettling. Uh, but you know, and some more plants. And uh, if you look uh, inside the tub, uh, a large, uh, what color cat haven't we had? Uh, a large uh, blue tip Siamese, but also very fluffy, uh, asleep, curled up because it's cool and refreshing in there. Oh, four mm. cats. Mm. Uh, but that's the bathroom. And there's toilet, obviously, with really good toilet paper, like the three ply stuff. All really right, so we, we fade back in cats. from black, just hear a flush noise, and yeah. Miriam closes the door behind her, and we're back. Mm -hmm. It's uh, as you leave, uh, like some sort of like spell happens, and like you just smell lavender. Oh. That chases. It's like a, a chaser. Uh, so <laughs> you're... Uh, Terry asks, uh, "Was there any reading material in the in the in the bathroom, Marion?" Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. So... There's like three pages left in an almanac. It was. <laughs> <laughs> But you haven't do... eaten it, have you? You know more about dill now, so it's not a complete write-off. <laughs> <laughs> so you get to the top of the stairs. This all happens off camera. And you get to the top of the stairs, and the landing at the top of the stairs is occupied by a suit of armor holding a long sword pointing down. And it sits upon a wooden stand in front of a large window. The armor is clearly decorative, uh, but that helmet and the sword, you can tell, are the genuine items. And the sword, it looks sharp. Like it could mean business. Um, so uh, that's right, greeting you right up at the top of the stairs. And then you have uh, an entrance over to the right, which ta which uh, takes you down a hallway. And you have an entrance over to the left, which takes you to a larger room. Do you want to investigate, look around? What do you want to do? Is there an inscription at the base of the, uh, the armor at all? Uh, there is not. Actually, you know what? There is. Uh, it says, if lost, please return to Fistandia, priestess of my of Mysteria. <laughs> of Mistra. <laughs> Seems like less of a spell than more of a request. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, wait, who among us has not left a full suit of armor in the back of a cab? And just, you know, it, it makes sense to me. Yeah, it's true. Uh, all right, so what are you guys going to do? Left or right? And the left. 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 All right. You go to a big room. And this room, most of this room, is taken up by long wooden tables that are covered with glass vessels and books. Cabinets with glass doors line the walls, and they contain all manner of specimens, all exhaustingly labeled, by the way. Just below the ceiling in the middle of the room, colorful globes circle each other in an intricate dance. The far wall is almost completely covered by a map of the night sky with a golden sunburst in the center above a closed door. 
I that investigate. seems important. <laughs> All right, everybody roll me some investigation uh, checks, and we'll see what you find. 20. 20. 19. 20. 20. 23. 23. Ah, All right. We love God, this you room. Got, <laughs> you yeah. guys... This room does not seem dangerous at all, and uh, you uh, investigate it with great vigor and enthusiasm and quickly uncover its secrets. Uh, Terry, you discover the puzzle book with the letter T is among the books in the middle table. Vibrato! So nothing happens. Uh. <laughs> Minty. You uh, discover that the cabinets are crowded with skulls and bones and animals that have been taxidermied and rocks and minerals and dried plants and jars with creatures floating in liquid. You see all sorts of weird, cool, natural history things, but nothing that looks like a book or a clue or anything else. Uh, Miriam, you notice that there is a star map on the wall. Is it labeled? It uh, it is not labeled. Uh, it has, uh, it has just like a big pattern of like random dots. I mean, it, it looks like maybe they're constellations or something like that, but five of them are brighter than the others. <laughs> That's about it, unfortunately. But, mm. but that you, you, you study the star map and actually make me an arcana check. Or some kind of knowledge. I don't know. Nat what 20, do you think? Twenty one. Nat a nat twenty. All right. Okay. So one of these is uh one of you know by the relative positions of some of these that these are in fact the brightest the biggest dots in the sky on this map are the brightest stars that you can see if you're outside looking at the sky. You're like, oh, that's the west star, and that's the hunter's elbow patch. And over there is the fawn's foot beans. Mm. <laughs> These are stars that I would see in the Sword Coast or the yes. miasma here has As stars. You, if, if you were, no, this is a map of the constellations and stuff in, that you would see in the Sword Coast. If you looked outside your house, you're like, Oh, that's that star, and that's that star. You sort of recognize them. I don't know if you know the names of these, but you're like, I get this. I've seen it before. Yeah. That's I mean, the real the night sky. The constellations are all based on stories, so yeah. The widow's exactly. knee. Yes. The only one recognized by dwarves. <laughs> uh, so uh, you find all sorts of cool and interesting things, uh, uh, including a book. Ah. Uh, the letter, the the book with the letter T, is oh. what Terry found. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I already so, shouted vibrato in some faint hope that maybe this time it would I be the one. to wonder, friends, if maybe we are not all going to make it out of this particular trap house alive. Perhaps one of us may need to be uh, given his tribute in order to leave the building. Okay, Orvain, you go first. When you say the word tribute, nothing happens, by the way. Mm. Oh, good guess. That was next on my list. Mm. All right. Uh, For those playing at home, the letters are I, B, R, T. We know it's seven letters long. Brittany. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Brittany. Um. <laughs> if you listen very carefully, you hear Cumin and Coriander doing baby one more time to amuse themselves in the kitchen. <laughs> But it nothing no no doors appear. Oh, and Terry shudders just just briefly. <laughs> you, you guys ever feel like you made a mistake? Because looking at those two down there, why did I name my first three born? And I wrote this down ahead of time: Time, Rose, and Mary. Oh, no kidding! And Minty's just like nursing his head at that. <laughs> Oh. Like, I've made a mistake as a parent. Your children God. have homunculus adjacent names. How awful. Yeah. <laughs> and are we looking for a sage? You you are, and he's not in here either, mm. by the way. <laughs> That's another spice, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, it, is. it is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> perhaps it is time for us to come in to the next room. 
All right, where do you want to go? <laughs> do you want to go to M12 or do you want to head yeah, the other M12. way? I'm very curious about this star chamber. Maybe All right. M12 well, will be a little more brighto. Oh. Well. <laughs> so, Corey. Hello. You, 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 you were just thinking about the stars and Miriam's going to be so excited because this next room is all about stars. This door opens into a dark space offering a view of the starry firmament of the night sky. It's what you just saw in your head. Five telescopes mounted on bronze plates point towards the constellations above. In the middle of the space, a one foot diameter of clear crystal sits at a circular brass stand. Let's all look in the telescopes. <laughs> all right. You look in the telescopes and it's like you are looking out at the night sky in Faerun, even though you're here in this weird, gross miasma world. Uh, you can see the sky. You can see everything you would see at home. Excellent. Uh, and I can see what I can see from my house from here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you point it directly at the floor, I suppose, because you're a dwarf and you live underground. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can free you, these things. They're in good condition. They've been well oiled and maintained. You can point them anywhere. Uh, you can just sort of I manipulate pointed at Terry. Them. You, <laughs> you, you see the pores in Terry's nose, very large, like craters on the moon. <laughs> oh, how embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> what were they pointed at before we were messing with them? Uh, they were pointed up at the sky in just sort of random places. Some of them weren't pointing at stars at all. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, and were there... Did you say that there were uh, very... Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? But the, the star chart. There Were there star uh, con certain constellations that stood out on that chart? There were. There were certain... There were, there were, in fact... Uh, how, do you remember how many bright stars there were? And then how many telescopes are there? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> five well excellent well i say that we uh we solve this escape room and point the uh point, point the telescopes to the where those bright stars are in the sky all right so as you as you it's just is it just you and miriam doing this or does everybody join in minty can point them out he, all right he has a good sense of them Okay, so you, you you spend a couple seconds aligning them, and as every time you align one of these telescopes with one of the bright stars in the sky that was pointed out on the other star map, a big beam of light shoots down and hits that giant crystal in the middle of the room. And so you do that, and it's a wum, 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 ding! <laughs> and the secret, the puzzle is solved. Ooh. All right. Uh, the secret door uh, then suddenly appears on the far wall, illuminated by the light of the crystal. And you hear a doodle -doo -doo. <laughs> <laughs> Is that you, Miriam? No. Huh. All right. Terry? No, it wasn't me. Mm. You would know if it was from me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go look at the revealed space m13 yeah. all right well uh, this room is bare except for a bookshelf covered in chains against one wall a plain wooden bench and a reading desk that's built into the shelves a book with a bust of a mage on its cover sits on the desk is it the same mage we've been seeing with the bald head and the, and the little beard mustache and the eyebrow situation absolutely yeah. it's the same one it's the same one, and you can make it out from here that it says that the letter it says is L. You think he's mm. famous? Do you make me an Arcana check? Sure. Uh, Fourteen. Uh, that's Mordenkaiden. Oh, he's famous. Very famous. <laughs> one of the most famous dog breeders in all of Faerun. Uh, and in fact, uh, uh, in fact, if you really the 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 delicious food and sandwiches has really bolstered your memory, and you think back, and you know that Morden Kaiden has this mansion spell that you can create an extra dimensional mansion, yeah, uh, with his spell. So, and you realize might this might be where you are. You're in a Morden Kaiden's mansion. Huh. Mm -hmm. um, the bookshelf, the chains rattle a bit, but Miriam, make me a perception check. 
perception. 18. You notice you're, you're almost 100% sure that you see a book on the chained bookshelf uh, that says Alundo. You can't make out what the rest of it says, but the book, you can see the word Alundo and it leaps out at you. Alundo. Hmm. Uh, it's chained? No, it's not chained, but it's on the chained bookshelf. I grab it! All right. As you go to grab it, the chained library lurches to life and groans at you. Oh, oh, pretty please. Uh, All right. Li liberate! Uh, where... Oh. Oh, why didn't I roll initiative for my chained library? It's time to go to initiative, <laughs> by the way. Uh, I thought I was being so smart. Ooh. Six. All right. Uh, well, it's not very fast, so I hope that... Uh, so... It's mostly stationary. <laughs> oh, my. All right. Uh, one second. What is everybody's... Oh. Miriam, what do you roll? <laughs> Six. Cool. <laughs> Distracted by the book of uh, the book on Alundo, you uh, you don't notice immediately that the that the that the whole bookshelf is starting to come alive and is groaning, menacing at you. Uh, Orvain, what did you get? Twenty two. Twenty two. You do notice this. <laughs> Minty, what did you get? Uh, Twenty three. 23 you also notice this and think oh why <laughs> <laughs> terry what did you get i got a two you don't notice this but are also thinking oh why <laughs> <laughs> all right uh so uh minty the library is starting to shudder and the chains are shaking and uh the and you uh, notice that one of the books is starting to lift off the shelf and it looks like it's gonna wind up and hit somebody what do you do so how many people are actually fully standing in this room uh, uh all of you it's not that big of a room so people are in the doorway perhaps or i think we all would have had to come in to i'm i'm basically touching the shelf okay minty would like to because Miriam is, I guess, the biggest person here. Everyone else is fairly short. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Minty would like to shove the two people behind him, maybe with a sharp elbow, to like get through the door and yank Miriam back through the doorway. And I could roll to see if everyone gets through the doorway, if you'd like. I think Miriam is very interested in what's on this shelf, so I think she would be very annoyed if you tried to yank mm -hmm. her away, so I think you'd have to make an opposed strength check against her, in fact. Because Miriam doesn't realize the, books be, the, the bookshelf is attacking her. Nope. She's just trying to grab something. I would like to do that opposed strength check, then. All right. Uh, Miriam, what's your strength? Uh, ten. Ten. All right. Roll me a roll me a strength check. Net twenty. Oh, ooh, you're ooh, staying ooh. planted. Yeah. All right. I yank Minty. at your clothing and tear it a little. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say that you you managed to get her attention though. Mm. Books. Like you pull my elbow and I'm like, my lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Angry books, <laughs> chains, rattles. Orvain, you notice that this book seems to be winding up, and now two of your compatriots are right where it's going to be taking a swing, probably. Uh, what are you going to do? Mm. Mm. Now that I've elbowed you in the stomach. <laughs> mm, that's perfect. You've knocked, you, you've knocked me back into range. By which, by which I mean ranged attack. I'm going to shoot at this bookcase with my bow and arrow. Excellent. Hopefully, roll me an attack roll. Hitting it to the wall. Attack. Uh, well, it is a bookshelf. It is a roll of eight. Uh, 
you, the bookshelf is surprisingly sturdy. You hit it, but it like doesn't like sort of like doesn't clang off like a metal reinforced part because it is animate. So it's like really mm. firmly bolted to the wall. Uh, so the arrow just sort of goes and doesn't do anything. Mm. All right, but now my chained library gets to go and it's going to flail and it's going to try to hit poor Miriam. Uh, and I, in fact, uh, I, in fact, make two attacks. All right, Miriam, does a 14 hit you? Yes. All right, uh, let's see. Ooh, wow. Ah, uh, you take two bludgeoning damage. Ow. I sort of swipe at you a little bit. And for my other attack, I'm going to roll at... Uh, I'm just going to try to hit you guys at random. I'm going to hit... I'm going to attack Miriam again. Uh, I definitely hit you with a 16 showing. Yeah. And wow, I'm rolling so badly. Take another two points of bludgeoning damage as these books sort of just... Viff, viff, sort of like smack you on the shoulder a little bit. Ow! And it hisses and shudders. Out of what mouth? Uh... <laughs> uh, but it's your turn, Miriam. The book that you so so desire is still in the bookshelf. It's not chained down. You just have to get to it. But there's these two uh... flailing book books on chains that are coming towards <laughs> you and in your face. Uh... Thunderwave the bookshelf. Holy, okay. Uh, constitution save. All right. Da -da 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 -da. I've got oh. pretty good con. Bad news. The constitution is also a written work. <laughs> does it, does it, do, do I make it on a 13? Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. That's my spell modifier. Oh, 12. The hit's 12. Oh, uh, so, so you save. Uh, uh, I save. Do I? I don't think I. Do I take half damage? Da -da. Half damage isn't pushed, so uh, you're gonna take half two d eight. Oh, all right. Roll me some roll damage. Those two d eights. I I can't be pushed anyhow because I'm already firmly yeah. bolted to the wall. It says seven. Seven damage. Ouch! Ah, the book shakes loose. <sighs> Terry, it's your turn. Oh. Uh, well, let's see. Um, if the I can now, Terry Terry has the keen eyes and instincts of the librarian, and he can tell when a book has moved someone. <laughs> he 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 has seen Miriam's attention on this book, and has a, a firm a firm unspoken idea that this this book is meant for someone, and it's this person. And so Terry is going to cast Mage Hand yet again on this loosened book in an attempt to get it. Absolutely. Um, during his turn. Excellent. Well, it's your turn. So the book is def this book does not weigh ten pounds. It's actually a it's actually a surprisingly thin volume. It's like maybe like that thick. Excellent. So let's see, what do I have to roll here? Uh okay. I'm excited for you to rescind its status as a living document. <laughs> okay, so that's a that's a nine plus five for the spell spell attack. Uh, would that be an attack? Would that uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to make. I don't. I'm not sure my deck. I I feel like the best I could do would be to try to wiggle the book to make sure you can't take anything off me if I was an animate bookshelf. But I don't have. I don't have like. It's like what am I supposed to do? Although I did make a very good dexterity save, so I mm. think maybe your mage hand just sort of like slips by and misses as the whole bookshelf lurches to the side to try and get away from whatever you're doing. I gave myself a deck save, and even though I have a terrible modifier, I rolled really well. <laughs> so, and the, the books flap around on the chains more. But you've seen the book, and you think you could get it, I think. Ah. All right. So, Minty, it's your turn now. I think this bookcase has offended me deeply on a personal level. So I'm going to throw my uh, whole pitcher of lemonade, which is now half empty, um, at it. And then I'm also going to take out my hammer and just like whap, I guess, the most readied book for throwing back at us <laughs> out of the air. <laughs> 
All right. Can you make me a dexterity check on not drenching Miriam uh, with lemonade? At this point, Minty doesn't really care, but 18. Oh, amazing. You splash onto the book and you hear the homunculuses somewhere going, oh, we'll have to clean that. No worries. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. Something to do. Something to do. Uh, and... <laughs> Uh, and you've and now now some of the books are wet and sticky with uh, beer and lemonade mixture, uh, and uh, you are free to whack at the most aggressively waving book if you wish. I will do that. Um... It snaps at you. Eesh. <laughs> with its leather bound tomes. Uh, dang, I'm rolling well on other things, but this is a eight. Uh, you uh, sort of. You definitely make contact, but it doesn't really do any damage, and the book sort of fl flaps out of the way. Yeah. Or vain. There's a slightly sticky bookshelf. Try again. Just pin it to the wall. That may hit. It's a 16. That's a hit. Roll me some damage. Excellent. D8. Oh, that is it. 13. 13 damage. Wow. This bookcase is starting to look kind of worse for wear. You don't damage any of the books, but the actual physical bookcase, like the, the wooden part that's holding it together, has like you take a big chunk out of it uh, with that arrow and uh, it sags a little bit on the right side a little bit. Um, but uh, I think that's I think that's doing great. But my chained library still gets to go and it's going to flail wildly at Miriam because it doesn't really care. But I'm assuming an 11 doesn't hit you. Nope. All right, then it's going to flail wildly at Minty. And I'm going to assume a seven doesn't hit you. Uh, no. OK, Miriam. You're you're there. The book the bookshelf is flailing at you. Wish to, what do you wish to do? Stab it. <laughs> Take out my rapier. <laughs> Stab the books. Doink. And, All right. Uh, let's see. I say you make me want to puke, and then stab it. Uh. Fifteen. A fifteen's a hit. Your rapier sinks satisfyingly into the wood. Uh, roll me some four damage. All right. Uh, the bookshelf it doesn't look like that much more beat up, but it's starting. It doesn't. Still isn't looking like pleased about it. If a bookshelf could look pleased. <laughs> All right, uh, Terry, it's your turn. Terry is very frustrated for several reasons. One, because his mage hand has failed twice, and two, because now there are books that are covered in lemonade and, and something else that was sticky, and that that goes against several things you're really not supposed to do with books in the library. And he and, and this person who he can tell really wants this book is not getting that book. And so he is filled with anxiety and, and it's not rage exactly, but a frustration bordering on being very upset. And so he is going to attempt to physically approach the bookshelf and take the book out uh, so that he can give it to Miriam. All and right. that is his action. M make me a dexterity check. Okay. Come on, roll. <laughs> Here we go. And he actually, he is going to uh, use his bardic inspiration that he hasn't used yet. Can I do that or have yes, I? Yes, absolutely. This is the okay. perfect time to do it. Excellent. Here we go. That is a three oh, or a uh, six. I wish it was a nine, but it's a six. You know what? You're so angry. Make me a roll with advantage. The power of, of, of librarianship has, it has buoyed your spirits. You miss. And then you go, no, Terry, try it again. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. What is it? It's a three. <laughs> you slip and fall in the lemonade. It's <laughs> not a good day for Terry. Well, you win some, you lose some, and sometimes the DM tries to help. Uh, but the dice, the dice decide what happens. Minty, it's your go. Before you is a sticky bookshelf. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I could make that worse by casting grease on it, but instead I'm going to turn my hammer around to the pointy end instead of the blunt end 
and do another swing at it. This offends me greatly. And that's a 20. All right. Roll me some damage. Is it a nat, tr- nat 20? Nat 20. Nat 20. <gasps> so you crit. You which crit. Is, I don't think you have to roll. I think you just No, get it's just automatic damage. Ma- max damage. What's your max damage for your hammer? Automatic ma- max or roll twice? You don't have uh, to confirm tr- crits anymore, do you? I don't remember. I'm going to say it's automatic max damage for the sake of speeding this thing along. Four. That's my rule today. <laughs> House four. rule. <laughs> it's four? Four damage. Four damage. All right. The bookcase shudders as as more of the dark, ickery, black wood splinters off, and it seems like some sap oozes out from it. It's clear that the bookcase is the magical part, not the books. It and and then it uh, it it shudders and whines and groans in the way that wood snapping under like temperature changes does. And Orvain, it's your turn. Mm, I see the damage that has been done by Minty, and I knock another arrow. Say out loud, time for these books to check out. <laughs> and then, then proceed to roll a 12. Uh, uh, the, you managed to hit a part that already got hit, aka a part that doesn't exist anymore, but it was a great shot. Good consistency. <laughs> Very good. Tight uh, grouping. Uh, okay, uh, now I've got three people to randomly attack. I'm so excited as a chained library. All right, so I'm going to attack uh, Miriam. I'm going to attack Miriam twice. All right. Uh, oh, Miriam, does a 21 hit you? Yeah. <laughs> Take nine points of damage. I'm unconscious. Oh, no. <laughs> Miriam has been knocked out. So, for a lack of better target, I guess I'm going to swing at uh, Minty now. Uh oh. Oh, and a 21 hits you as well. Yeah. Ah, but only for three points of damage. All right, I'll take three. Uh, Miriam, could you describe how you're unconscious on the floor right now? <laughs> There's just a wet, cold feeling all over my body. And it's dark. Uh, do you want me to do a death save? I do. <laughs> a 12! Yay, I succeeded All right. one. All right. So, Corey has to make three death saves. Or one of you can stabilize her. And, uh, I'm sure there's some sort of provisions that you might have on you that have miraculous healing powers, even though they're prepared by disgusting homunculuses. Uh... <laughs> So, uh, Terry, it's your turn. Miriam's and, just taken a book to the teeth. And that is exactly what I'm going to do. Terry feels has failed this person twice. Uh, and and so now is going to run over to her and take out the, the cookies. They're, they're really nice looking cookies. And he just, that sort of cognitive dissonance has had with disgust and just just sort of delight at these cookies and he crumbles he crumbles them into a fine powder and just places them at the at, at the corners of her mouth and just going these the deliciousness it will help i swear it will i don't know why it does but it does oh god you're you're a rock gnome dripping in yellow liquid feeding an unconscious elf cookies and whispering sweet nothings into her ear it's yeah. super hot, right? <laughs> I mean, everybody's got their own taste. So, <laughs> and these cookies taste great. They do, mm. Miriam. Uh, grass-fed butter brings you back to <laughs> consciousness. Very and cookie crumbs just go everywhere. <laughs> really good cookies. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad you're back. Uh, you have one HP, but if you spend around eating a cookie, you can have a set. You can have one HP restored per cookie you eat because they're not very big cookies. So that, I give her the rest of my cookies. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so you can you're, you you can you you because you did get hit really hard. You have to. You take, it's going to take you like an entire round to eat two cookies. <laughs> they must be very dry cookies. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's something on the floor there for you to dip it in. All right, Minty. Uh, Miriam, do you want me to actually heal you? 
Yes, please. All right. <laughs> I uh, tap her on the shoulder firmly, but not too hard. You know, like a dad would to a kid who scraped her knee. Mm. Uh, and cast Cure Wounds. Ooh. Which is 1d8 hit points. So. I think you rolled the d8. I roll yeah. the yeah. d8. So I will roll the d8, and you get six. Hey, I'm almost back to full. Woohoo. Doesn't take much for a level one character. Orvain, uh, what would you like to do? I have to try once again to hit it with an arrow, but this time with the quippy remark of all roads lead to Tom. <sighs> that is a 15. Oh, that's a hit. Roll me some damage. Thank goodness. It's uh, eight on the die. Three oh, bonus is 12 points 12? of damage. Eight plus three is 11. 11 points of damage. <laughs> I'm a dwarf. <laughs> All right. Uh, your bookshelf. Another another chunk crumbles out of the bookshelf when the front leg goes awry and the whole thing slumps, luckily away from where Miriam lies prone on the floor, a book-shaped indent and bruise swelling up on her cheek. Uh, the, the tome that you so desire is still firmly wedged in there, and two waving books on chains start whirling around. And you know what? Uh, Miriam's on the floor, so she's no longer in range. Minty is bending down next to her, and Terry is still there. So, uh, so I'm gonna try and uh, aim at one of you guys. Or, uh, so I'm gonna aim at Terry, and Terry, uh, with a natural twenty. Uh, ooh! Uh, so I'm gonna say that's seven points of damage, Terry. Okay. I, I have one health point left. One hit point left. That's still good. I'm still up. I'm still up. Oh, that's All right, well, one attack. Okay. <laughs> so on the bright side, I don't think a three hits you. So so the ne the next book just, just gets really close. Like, it's not actually that close, I guess, on a three. It's, like, pretty far away. But you're still really scared after the last book. So <laughs> <laughs> it would have hit you, but it, the first one knocked you back. So it just swoops over. Yeah. Right, yeah. Uh, Miriam, it's your turn. I think it's my turn to pay you for the cookies. And I'm gonna cast, uh, Healing Word on, on, on Terry. Oh, thank you. Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Four! Four, he four! Four health points. Excellent. Back up to six. All right, Terry, it's your turn. The book Terry shape has... looks... The bookshake, the bookcase looks terrible, by the way. Okay, well, it's about to get more terrible. <laughs> he <laughs> just are. leave them to Orvain. Just <laughs> <laughs> Terry has really had it with his bookshelf, <laughs> and uh, knowledge should be accessible. <laughs> Dang it! And he. <laughs> He he is just go, is going to make a mad scramble. He's got very bad athletics, but he's going to make a mad scramble to just yank this thing, this book out of there, so they can just we can just run away. So that is what Terry is going to do. Should I roll an athletics check? Check. Yes, roll me an athletics check. Okay. Oh, come on, come on. That's a natural one. All right, so I'm going to say that you, actually, you are going to biff so bad, you're not going to even touch the bookcase. You're going to end up on the floor. But please describe to me the way that this happens. Terry is a vision of righteous indignation, and he rolls up his purple sleeves. He pushes Toto to the frog to his back pouch, and he says, get, re get ready, buddy. We're gonna get someone what they're looking for, and trips over his own feet and and face plants into the floor, much like uh, when he got smacked on the back at the very top of the episode, and just falls right on his nose and loses, let's say, two health point, two hit points. Oh, I was only gonna make you lose one. You're oh. so hard on yourself, don't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somehow uh, this time, it it you didn't have the lemonade to really soften the blow of the floor on your face. Yeah. 
Maybe maybe he slipped because of the lemonade. Yeah. Ah, there you go. It really helps, you know. Team player. <laughs> so you take you take you take one hit uh, one one hit point to your hit points, and you take one hit point to your dignity, which will take far longer to recover. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when you make hard lemonade, Minty. Yeah. <laughs> it makes everything harder. <laughs> speaking uh, of, so yeah. Speaking of, it's your turn. The bookcase sags, uh, and you think perhaps chuckles a little bit. <laughs> well, <laughs> the uh, the the cold ones are starting to get to Minty, and he's uh, getting a little heated under the collar. Uh, so he's going to give it a real good swing with his. Uh, hammer with the pointy end again uh that is a 19. all right that's a hit roll me up some damage four damage oh oh seriously yeah. <laughs> all right you take an enormous you take another huge hunk out of this the wood groans and splits and you just hear a massive I mean, a groan, I guess. I don't know what noise a bookcase makes. And it goes, ah, as it almost falls apart. But it lurches from side to side. The book's on the brink of spilling out. And then it stops and nothing more happens. It starts swirling its chains again and riding up for another one. Orvain, it's your turn. I will knock. I knock one more arrow. And before loosing it, at this thing. I'm going to make sure that I hit it first. That is a 19 on the die. Yes. It's going to be fine. Yeah, that is, a, that is a hit. And before I release the arrow, I say, you know the one thing I hate about books, and you couldn't tell from my appearance, but it's the ragged right. I'm fully justified in my opinion. <laughs> All right. Publishing puns. <laughs> and, and you know what? Your alignment is what? Good? <laughs> Far left. <laughs> Far left. <laughs> yes. Perfect. Uh, well, uh, you push this thing right over the edge. You, the arrow sinks into the wood and the last of the bookcase's horrific malevolence oozes out. The chains go slack and the book that Miriam was trying to reach all along is dramatically ejected out in a little arc and lands on her as she is recuperating on the floor. <laughs> ah. Uh, Miriam, would you, uh, I have, I have DM'd you something in okay. Discord. Uh, the name of this book, by the way, is The Endless Chant of Alondo the Seer, bracket, remix, bracket. <laughs> this might be what I need to finish my life's work. What a short life. Just gonna crack it open as the dust settles in the room, start reading. Now this is a story all about how... Alondo skull got carted around. This will take a while, so sit right there. And chat how you how he became prophet in the court of air. It's perfect. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Terry Terry stands by with his nose very bloodied. Is I'm so glad that you found what you were looking for. It's a beautiful thing. When that happens. Oh, thank you. And just grabs his hand and shakes it. Thank you for the cookies. And, and for welcome. trying. It's no one ever tried beauty. before. <laughs> oh, he actually gets a little teary-eyed at that. Oh, thank you. And thanks for the health bonus. Thank you. All right. That was, that was incredibly beautiful. Uh, at this point, uh, a tall... Well, actually, no. I said he was a gnome. A small wizard... Uh, wanders into the room and goes, Oh, this is where the last book must be. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, hello. Hello. Uh, my name is, what was my name again? <laughs> <laughs> You've been here so long you forgot it? I know. It's Matreus. This is, uh, hello. My name is Matreus. I, I came in here. Uh, I opened the portal uh, and I've been looking around for the magical books. Uh, to that will help that will get us the escape word. 
And uh, I found one in the bedroom where I was taking a nap after sleeping off a very large lunch. Oh my! Uh, and uh, and there was one there that the letter on it was E. And then I found and I found all the rest of them downstairs. Uh, what one was in here? Oh, I believe it was yet. the L letter. All right, for the previous yeah. word. That was the last one we got. L. Mm. Uh, yeah, this is L. So now, so so uh, with your E and your L, what letters do you guys have? L I B R T E. Liberté. Brito. The Greek yogurt. What la la? <laughs> it's the Greek yogurt. <laughs> well, it's liberty, ah, and the door opens. <gasps> well, Wizards are far too. Cunning for their own good. <laughs> so, uh, you as you can make you can now make your way downstairs, and you see the same glowing door that's starting to that's starting to fade now because the 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 word has been said a little while ago, uh, and 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 indeed, as you try it, the if you say liberty, the door lights up, and uh, then you can and you and and you can go. Do you want to look around the house or anything like that before you leave? Already got lunch. Yeah. Pet a cat in passing, you know. I have the sediment tables I came here for to begin with. I turn to Matreus and I reach into my bag and I pull out the the half eaten sausage roll and I give it back to him. I think I I believe you left this back in your room. Oh <gasps> my sausage in a bun, thank you. Oh, if only I wasn't so full. Oh, thank you. That's very thoughtful of you, honestly. You know no what? Problem. You could Terry. Thank you so much, Terry. Your name was Terry, right? That's right. That's right. Uh, it says, uh, "Yeah, I can read it on your name tag." Junior Educant, uh, 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 mediocre status. What did you do? Oh my! Well, never mind. That is good. Good job. I'll put in a good word for you. And hopefully, that I could. Geez, yikes! I've never seen that before. Holy moly! But here, you know what? Let me ha have my sausage in a bun. I've had I've had a couple bites of it, but thank you so much. For rescuing me, even though I didn't have to do anything. Thank you, thank you. Well, thank you, Sage Matreus, and I appreciate if you talk to if you talk to Randall Keith, Randall Keith, and put and let him know that I I I this is give me a, a good rating. I'd appreciate that. Thank you so much. All right, I, I'll I'll let your boss Randall Keith from Candle Keep know, uh, and uh, and uh, and and you guys are free to leave, and the adventure is at an end. Fantastic. All right. Marvelous! Great job, team. Hey, do you guys want to say anything to yourselves as you as you exit and go? I just uh... so long, losers. <laughs> Liberty. It's, Li the, Liberté. it's always the last word. Liberty. It's always yeah. the last word you try. Mm -hmm. And I just give a firm handshake to the sage as we walk through the light, palming one of my uh, little business cards in it, and say, "Yeah." Good to meet you, Minty. He goes, is this an advertisement? And it says in a bright dual voice of Rose and Mary, because I already gave their names, and amateur fighting ring, and amateur fighting ring. And it just keeps cycling every 30 seconds. As, so as soon as you are away from him, but not, not like... A, a respectful distance, just like as soon as you're not looking at him, he's going to take that card and he's going to like fold it in half, and he's going to leave it discreetly in the dustpan uh, in in the mansion. And then you're going to hear Cor Coriander and Cumin call out, "Thank you! We'll get to cleaning that right away. Thank you so much. Please come again anytime, anytime. We miss you. Can we pack you some stuff? Goodbye." <laughs> Harry, I hope you have a long and fruitful career as a adjutant thank you very much seeker crack horse i'm so glad we were able to assist you and get you what you needed now i return to my mountain home in the sword mountains to lay out the course of a long protracted legal battle against those who've been stealing the gold from our mountains through the river sounds about right I sounds hope that right. goes well Always all right me. Uh, Miriam Lilly went on to write a phenomenally underregarded but 
Uh, still appreciated alternate history of Alondo based on the remixed chant she found. And uh, Orvain went on to uh, have uh, an extremely long career as a lawyer because dwarves are naturally long lived. <laughs> Minty and Terry, we'll find out what happens to them next time. But thank you so much for joining us uh, for Candlekeep Mysteries. Uh, this has been the joy of extra dimensional spaces. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.